Hello all, Webby here. Uh, Before we kick off this week's show, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been listening throughout the years. Within this podcast, Peebs asks how many podcasts we've done in total since the podcast started in 2008. And in the show, I was unsure. I thought around 800. Obviously, we had a break. We changed names of the shows a few times. Remember Mojo Radio? What a time to be alive. Anyway, without the specials, because there has been a few specials, the last episode of Mojo Radio was episode 477. So when I started Mojo Radio with the crew, we pulled the number. We we, we, we carried on the show numbers from the original 360 Gamer Cast. When I restarted 360 Gamer Cast again, after shutting down Mojo Radio and having a bit, a bit, a bit of a break, I started the numbering system again. And we are now up to episode 234. So you add those numbers together and we get 711. So in total, podcasts without the specials has been 711 episodes, which is a lot of podcasts. So I'm now in debates within myself, um, would like some feedback if possible, if I should change the numbering system to encompass all of that, and from next week, go from 712. So we have the numbers in order from the very beginning. So let me know your thoughts. Um, I'd be interested to know. But again, a massive thank you to everyone who's been listening throughout the last 16 years of podcasting. It's been a roller coaster for sure. And... Where there is another podcast next week, obviously, but don't forget, I do remind you in this show that I am having a month off in December because I'm going away to see family in Australia. Now, when I come back from holiday, the podcast will resume as normal, but I would like to maybe start doing some more video stuff if possible. Let let me know if you're interested in any of that. Used to be quite big on doing a lot of stuff on YouTube, but kind of life took over and was very busy so if you'd like to see some of that let me know as well but as i say i hope you enjoyed this week's show uh it's a really good one we've got peebs and stunty and darren and nick so it's a big podcast i kind of take a little bit of a back seat this week and let the guys just roll on but it's a really good one and i hope you enjoy so without further ado here is the latest episode of 360 GamerCast. Hello and welcome to 360 GamerCast, episode 234 for Tuesday the 26th of November 2024. I'm your host, Mark Webb. Everyone else knows me as Webby360G and joining me this evening is... Back by popular demand, it's Peebs. I'm not playing cold at all, nope. nope. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm back or if I'm crap, I don't know. Uh, it's number one stump master. <laughs> And since I switch, as usual. Wow, this is a full house. I don't think we've had five people on the podcast in years. Years and years. It is, mate. Mm. It is. So, it's nice to have you all on. Fantastic. Let me just sort my volume out. I think I'm a bit too loud. Test. We've got enough people to field one half of a a family uh, fortunes. Yes. Now, okay. (laughs) So a couple of things to get out of the way before we start properly. Um, Number one is next week's episode is going to be the last episode this year. (laughs) Yes. Indeed. And I know next week is Patreon week, but because it's the last episode this year, I'm going to put it out for free for everyone as well. So... Early Christmas gift. Ah, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh, she's so generous. I know. So, yeah, so I'm just looking at the 
my calendar now. Yeah, because I'm going to return from Australia on the 30th of December. So probably the next recording we'll do will be on the 5th or the 6th of January now. So, yeah, the next episode will be out the 7th of January after next week's one. Okay? Cool. Because I've decided I'm not, I'm not going to do an Australian episode. I'm just going to enjoy some time away in the sunshine and become a lobster. Aren't you, are you going to meet up with any of the Aussies while you're out there? No. No. Ah. I'm going to just sit by the pool and sit mar- margaritas. Avoid getting eaten by all the uh, insects and other creatures that are trying to sap your mm. life away. Pretty much. Um, and the other bit of news this week... A uh, sad bit, bit, bit of news for those of you that are in multiple video game communities. Um, learned today that Toz, the founding member of another podcast, Cranky Gamers, uh, sadly, has passed away. Yeah, it's quite sad news today, actually. I mean, I messaged him a little while back, actually, because I've got him on both PlayStation and Xbox. Um, about asking him about his podcast because I, I did listen to it quite a lot over the last ten years. I think it sort of started maybe even older than yours, maybe. I think he was one of the first ones to really take yeah. up amateur podcasts in in the UK. Anyway, um, so he's one of the first ones I ever came across. Um, he's had several co-hosts, a bit like yourself in a way, Werby. Lots of different co-hosts and stuff, but. Um, he was a Marmite character, but you can't deny his passion for video games, and he was always regularly putting podcasts out week in, week out, up until recently. Um, I know he, he probably he did mention he had a few health issues over the years, so maybe that's um, caught up with him in the end. But, yeah, Marmite character, but sad news all the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, his podcast was is, was definitely older than this one because i remember listening to his show before this podcast started so yeah yeah i think he might probably one definitely one of the first video game podcasts in the uk for sure um because if you think back back in the day because i because this one started 2008 um i'm not sure when his started actually it can't have been that much before but you know, no. it was iTunes. Download your podcast yeah. into your PC, plug in your iPod, and then and then ferry it across to it. Um, drag and drop. And how things have changed. I mean, iTunes. Oh, on yeah, because desktop doesn't even have a podcast set section anymore. No, well, podcasts were obviously a fairly new thing when Apple came out, and and that's all it was back then. It was just amateur people, you know, doing it from the bedrooms or from the you know living rooms or whatever before podcasts really became a thing and it, and I think podcasts really sort of took off mainly due to covid when all these celebs couldn't do much so they were just all started their own podcasts up and obviously they had all the backing and all the proper audio equipment and microphones to be able to do it probably and now podcasts are you know there's hundreds and hundreds of them you know all like Gary Lineker does a football one and all the you know all the big people are doing them all now so but back then it was pretty much an amateur it was type. yeah alongside the uh, like the the gaming publication one yeah like, you had, like you had the official like yes and like podcast beyond and all that kind yeah, but of they stuff don't even do them anymore Darren do they that that, uh, that I don't know to be honest because because there was kind of a golden era of just gaming podcasts in general, you know, with us amateurs yeah. and the big boys like Giant Bomb and IGN and stuff, as you say. And then, like, podcasting kind of went through, like, a big dip. And then, and then because there was loads of stuff I was reading about, our oh, podcasts are dying, listeners, ships down, etc. And then, as you say, like, when COVID hit, that kind of went up again. Um, yeah, they're the big, big the business now, I think. Anyway. Well, that's, well, that's mm. why all the you know, all the celebs and getting on them now. They've all, there's, you know, loads of comedians do them, and obviously they're all getting sponsored. I mean, I listened to some. I mean, the the, the overlap one, which Sky Sports, like um, Gary Neville and all them do yeah. it, 
<laughs> they're like three minutes of adverts before you even get to the flipping start of the show. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, we're sponsored by this, we're sponsored by that, and I'm thinking, mm. good job you got a skip on Spotify, because I'll skip the first three minutes, don't even listen to them, listen to them. <laughs> but, you know, obviously they're, re- they're getting paid by all these... <laughs> but I remember when I, when, I was search- when I first got my iPod and I was never into podcasts, and I just sort of, that's how I came across this one once, and I was just looking for... Back then, it was all mainly American podcasts, yeah. uh, gaming podcasts. There weren't. I don't even know. I think was it Gamespot was probably the only British official type professional one. Yeah, I think yeah, um, maybe. that I could find with old. Um, what was his name? We had him on as a guest once, didn't we? Guy something or other. Oh, guy, name? guy Cocker. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a few, but not many. And then a lot of them were just amateur ones, like you said, like. 360 Gamer Cast and Cranky Gamers and there was the Veteran Gamers. There's, there's a few. I don't know if they're still going, yeah, but the yeah, there's not so many going. There's still going, I know. Xbox Ramble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because obviously, long, long-term, long-time listeners will know. Obviously, we had a bit of a rival with old Cranky Gamers back in the day. There was a, a, a big crossover in communities and stuff, and we used to. It, do you remember certainly when we had the pro clubs? And we yeah, had 360 yeah. Gamer Cast versus Cranky Gamers. Yeah. Um, and that was when Dark, old Frosty, was Dark, like the Darkest old, uh, Frost played for them. I thought he was mm. about to say you like, met up like the Anchor Man thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Euro Gamer. <laughs> no, but there was like a little post- podcast rivalry, and we called it the Podcast Wars, but it, it, a long time ago now. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's literally the only other. British one I listened to um, until he stopped about a year ago, and he he was frustrating with his rants and stuff, and you know, he, like I say, he was a Marmite character who either loved or you hated him. But I just couldn't go help myself going back and listening. Just to... and he wasn't always talking about games. He like he had, he had his rants about other stuff, and he was into his football he and did, um, like, headline so he... reviews and stuff, didn't he? Like, yeah, he was really into his tech. Yeah, he had. I've just actually looked through my old PlayStation messages because we were. I had some messages on there going to and fro about when I asked him I asked him about recommending some headphones for me and stuff and he was sending me loads of messages about it but um, yeah I messaged him not long ago to see you know what was happening to the podcast and I never had a reply so I thought oh perhaps he's just sacked it off but well basically he went more off, to it basically he went off to Twitch and he was just Twitch streaming instead and he just put, yeah he, I think he, he was trying to bit. make a bit of a go of the old streaming wasn't he um, yeah, I think well, he, he did build in, up quite a bit of a following, but... Yeah, he got in sort of around the, the same time as me, maybe just before, but then that was when the old bikini streamers started and famous people went on it, so then it just... Yeah. Like, any normal people just had no chance, you know, because they were pushing the hot tub streamers and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, yeah Nick, anyone, you know what to do, don't you? Get in a hot tub. Get in a hot tub and put your bikini on, it's mate. You'll be yeah. all right. No, you mate, bikini, man. <laughs> They've started banning people now, again. They're banning people for drawing pictures with nipples in them. Oh, right. Is that a thing, is it? Yeah. They just keep going from banning anything and everything to allowing everything and anything. They just can't get any happy medium because they ban everything and they keep people like sponsors happy and then they realise the numbers have gone down so then they allow everything again. Well, they've, they've, they're going through like another ad apocalypse at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Where like a load of sponsors have, have pulled out. Yeah. From Twitch over well, like possible uh, anti-Semitic stuff mm. due to this like Palestine-Israel uh, conflict that's going on. But um, yeah, it's just since. Sign of the times, I guess. The community's been going so long. I mean, we've had a few, you know, um, people of commu- people in the community, haven't they? We had Nats and obviously our Hogarth and a few yeah. of us. Just obviously over time, these, you know, life happens, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just a yeah, Nats shitty thing. But yeah, yeah, and then he defected. Yeah, then he came over. <laughs> he defected yeah. to the 360G. Well, speak, yeah, speaking of the defected, uh, defected. Not defective, <laughs> not defective. <laughs> Two of the guys who were on there a few years ago, uh, Hayden and Steve, they started up their own podcast, which has sort of been on pause for a while because I think Hayden's had some health issues also. But they're recording, like they're coming back to do a sort of like a one-off thing, 
like a tribute to him and stuff like that. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Culture gamers, if you search for that, if you don't already, you know, have a look on there because they, I think they'd have been with him for quite a few years as well. Okay. I mean, I suppose if you spend that much time with him, you're eventually inevitably going to fall out, aren't you? Well, yeah. But that's anyone. Like, that's why so many people fell out during COVID because if you can't, you know, it's all right seeing them like or listening to them. But once you're in in it, then you know people fall out, don't they? Unfortunately. Our life, mate. Yeah. Oh yeah, look, you're some of the biggest bands, you know, Pat mate grew up together, then fall out, everyone, you know, falls out, it just just happens that it's life. But yeah. Like I said, I think there's a few podcasts tonight doing sort of tribute type or mention him like we are ourselves, but mm. you know, like I say, love or hate him, he was sort of a pioneer, if you can say that, of British amateur gaming podcasts, you know, everyone's everyone who's into sort of British gaming and listens to podcasts knows of of Toz and what he, yeah. you know, he did to start it off. Ones, obviously, sort of like three sixty and like the overseas connection as well, like a mixture of yeah. English and American hosts. And yeah. Mhm. I fall out with peeps every day. Oh, don't, don't blame <laughs> you, mate. Has yeah. he even taken your trophies yet? Your trophy score. Uh, <laughs> Not yet. Well, that's when the fall out is going to happen, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I still haven't actually worked out how trophies actually work. It's kind of... Well, I don't think anyone does, do they? But I did hit the 300 mark, whatever that means, when you go from, like, a little bronze um, uh, emblem to a silver, I think it is. Oh, it's getting near I'm me now. Level 277. Mm. I was an idiot. I couldn't. Uh, if they didn't allow you to change the tag names, did they? Like your um, online name. So I had like one for four years and then ditched it. Oh, you had to reset it. Yeah, uh, reset all your trophies, did it? Mm. No, I just uh, started a new tag. Just left the other oh. languish. Yeah, because I wanted Wounded. to change mine, but I didn't want to lose. The other thing is, you would lost all your PS Plus stuff from the PS3 mm. uh, oh. as well, and I still use my PS3 now and again. I'm really lucky because my PSN name is just my name because I made it on the PSP before the PS3 came out and I had no idea that it was supposed to be some sort of, you know, gamer tag handle thing. I just put my name in twice. So that so my actual name is there, so that's quite funny. Good idea is don't name yourself um, <laughs> certain <laughs> things or do certain things just in case, just like that guy that that man's man that got the Dumbledore tattoo uh, three days before <laughs> J.K. Rowling revealed he was gay. <laughs> yeah, the actor was gay as well, so, I mean... What, Richard Harris? No, not the next uh, next one. What, John Hurt? No! <laughs> uh, Dan Bomb. Michael Gann? Yeah, you're thinking of... Um... Oh, oh, Ollivander, isn't it? The, the wand guy was John Hurt, wasn't it? Yeah. Cool. Anyway, right. Yeah. Like, since um, we've got a lot, a lot of people here today, let let's get into talking about games we've played. Um, starting with Mister Peebs, talk to me about Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Shark. <laughs> it is called Hungry Shark. <laughs> what? I thought I had to have a look it up then. <laughs> oh, it's only a right. Uh, no, it's not actually because. The trophies are freaking hard. Um, <laughs> but no, it was... Um, every, everyone knows what Bloody Hungry Shark is. It was a flipping mobile I game. Think. Probably, Don't you? It was a lot, no. literally a mobile game. Oh, you're not on about um, Snake? No. No. No, it was on when, like, you know, when we probably got smartphones, but it's probably one of the biggest games on flipping mobile. A bit like... Um, we call Angry Birds and all them sort of Never stuff. It's that it era. Also, you playing it? And it's a shark. You basically dive into the sea with this shark, and you you go around um, eating everything. But there's like little missions, and you can uh, put different clothes on. You unlock clothes to put on your shark and stuff. Gives him different abilities and stuff. Um, it's just a fun like the cartoony type clothes. graphic. Yeah, you could put like little hats and that on it, and um, and, and there's like twenty twenty. Yeah, 25 sharks to unlock. It's quite a big game, but yeah, it was, li- it was the only mobile game that I played, really. I never really really 
was, I still am not really into mobile games, not at all. But that one did, I used to spend a few pop. hours. Yeah, unless it was Gears Plop. <laughs> the only reason I played that was because he was getting achievements on it. <laughs> <laughs> they deleted that eventually, didn't they? They took it all down. Yeah, they stopped it, didn't they? Yeah. But yeah, that was quite a good community game. Yeah, a lot of people in the community were playing that. Um, but yeah, this was a mobile game, but they, I know they ported it over to Xbox and PlayStation a little while back because I saw it on Xbox. Oh, could be a good couple of years ago, um, but they were charging for it, and I just thought, mm, no, I'm not really going to pay for it. But then I was scrolling through the PS um, Plus catalog, and I see it there, so I thought oh, I'll give it a download and give it a go. And it's actually ports quite well. It's it's plays quite well, but like I said, it's um, the trophies are going to be hard to unlock because it's. It, I've been playing it for a few hours and um, not really getting very far. And I've only unlocked a couple of trophies. Not there's a trophy for like um, get, unlocking all twenty five shards. Well, it's, I've only unlocked three. It's a lot weirder than I thought. I'm still watching the video here now on the on the store, and he's like jetpacking through the air, and then there's another one that's on land, like eating people. Yeah, you can you can jump out of land for a little bit and stuff, and. Yeah, I thought the graphics and that are quite good. It's a good, fun little game. Like I say, it's free. Well, not free. It's on the PSM Plus, so if you pay for it, then it's worth a download. But seven ninety nine otherwise. Oh, is Which it seven ninety nine? Is it? I mean, it's got a four three three out of five on the rate. Yeah, I'll say it's it's a fun little game. I find it's one of them just like pick up and play. If you've only got like fifteen twenty minutes and you just want a quick gaming fix and oh, whack it on and off. probably their most successful game in the last <laughs> yeah. <few> years <laughs> but yeah I'm enjoying it but um, yeah, I don't I know you boys keep saying oh he said he downloaded that for trophies trophies no this is not going to be a it's it's probably, probably achievable game. but it's yeah it looks it is well so it sort of looks like a kids game, game. No, not really. Mode, um, no <laughs> <laughs> I was just say you played Man Eater, didn't you? As well, played. Yes, yes, it's quite similar to that, I guess. But yeah, I, I did like Man Eater. I, I did a full thousand game score. That did I tell you? I think I told you back in the day. But yeah, I did like Man Eater. I thought you had this. I've noticed. With, uh, yes, I did actually, like didn't I? Rich. Yeah, the the very last achievement didn't unlock for me. That was Whatever. it. Yeah. No, um, it didn't at the time because I remember I was still on the podcast then. I think when I played that, or I just came on for that week. But yeah, um, the very last achievement didn't unlock. But then I think, without going switching my Xbox and checking, I think when they brought out the DLC and I went back to play it, I think it unlocked. So whether they patched it or not, if yeah, I remember, maybe, yeah, not retroactively yeah. unlocked it. Yeah, because I yeah, remember people, it, uh, because you came on the podcast absolutely stonking pissed and was talking about <laughs> Manny. Uh, <laughs> it was bloody hilarious. The shark game. Oh, oh yeah, the shark game. Now, was yeah. it called? <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah, I do remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But yeah, it's all right. Awesome. Okay. There's actually a PS5 upgrade for, for uh, Man Eater. Oh, oh, peeps, you have to go on the Pro. Yeah. You've got a PS5 yeah. Pro yeah, like, version, you'll be well away. Yeah, and it's yeah, on I think PS it's on the, Plus as well. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think I've seen it on the PS Plus. I have te- been extra. tempted. Well, yeah. it's yeah. well worth your 700 quid, that is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it well, this is the not? thing. Yeah. This Pro Enhanced 700 quid console, and I'm playing the bloody... GTA's <laughs> Red Dead's <laughs> Hungry Shark. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Cheers, peeps. Uh, Nick? Yeah, I've only played a few games this week. I've, play, I've finished um, Black Ops 6 campaign. Oh, well, what did you think? Uh, that was all right. I mean, I haven't played last year's one because apparently that was really bad. And I think that's the only one so far I haven't finished last year's well I haven't even played last year's game so I mean it's all right it's it's a typical COD game you know like the set pieces and stuff like that but which is fun but there's a few new bits where um like in between missions you walk around the big house and like plan it and um talk to people I think Woods is in a wheelchair now for some reason I can't remember Spoilers. that might be one of the Black Ops games <laughs> got paralysed I, I can't remember and then in, in advanced warfare he's got like robot legs or something 
Oh, mate, I fucking don't know. I think so, I don't know. I, um, yeah, I, uh, I, yeah. think, I thought the campaign was good. I mean, I don't know if we can really talk spoilers now, but there was the one yeah. mission that involved some zombies, which I thought was quite a freaky level for a COD game. Yeah, it was a bit that like playing was... a horror game. It was like playing Doom. I was like, oh, I've got to get the key cards and stuff like that. And that was a bit like, ugh. Because I don't know. You know, I haven't played many... They don't normally put the zombies stuff no. in the campaign, do they? And and the mannequins. they That freaked yeah, me out, was, man. That was a little bit... I mean, not as bad as some things, obviously. You know, like some of the games, like Resi 7 and 8 and things like that. But, but you expect... Yeah, you expect those in that type of game. Whereas in a Call of Duty, you just expect... You know, shoot all these things, move to a checkpoint. Yeah. Shoot all these things, move to a checkpoint you know, drive on the back of a car while you're shooting stuff to get to checkpoints. But there's a few extra missions as well. But did you like them where um, you were actually planning the mission? Like there was a, I suppose, a heist mission when you were breaking into a vault, but you actually just like walking around talking to people. Like, yeah, getting, and you make um, some decisions. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, and then there was like a, was there a young George Bush? Like when he was like Senator Bush or something. Yeah. I was like, oh, what's he doing in there? That's nice. Because I think, oh, that's quite new. But then this, what's this, like early 90s? Which yeah, was early 90s. Old, yeah. But still 30 years ago. So I'm like, oh. No, yeah. I think the um, the campaign is really good. Um, Nick, I think, you know, it's probably one of, one of the best ones that, that, that I've had for a few years. I think the whole package for Blop 6 has been pretty good, apart from the glitches. Um what glitches? So I'll be. I was playing. Oh, I spent ten hours playing fucking Warzone on Saturday, um, with Colin and Peebs. And um, for some reason, like my clan tag changed, and I couldn't change it back. It just kept on like I clicked on the page for my clan tag, and it just wouldn't. It would just take me back to the dashboard. Um, or the moment of the game, and also my name, my actual gamer tag. Every time we loaded into a game, it was just question marks. That was really fucking weird. Maybe you're questioning your identity. Maybe. I have been pondering it. I had um, a few. Oh, it's a glitch. I think they did, like, a, like when they did a big update, a couple, like, last Friday, when they put the um, the battle pass into the multiplayer game, I think it, like, nerfed loads of guns and, like, like ruined people if they had a gun set up with attachments and stuff like that because i had one just like basically set up and i thought how come i've got no ammo left because it like took away some of your attachments you had to go in and redo all that stuff oh, I think that, yeah. that happens that's that's basically a war zone thing yeah like, so i think so i think war zone breaks some stuff like from the main game for you because yesterday i logged on to it on my xbox just to chill out on the sofa and play for half an hour and when I logged into my Xbox and went onto the normal Blops multiplayer, I I could sort out my clan tag and my name was back. So I think it's just a Warzone thing. Um, so it's an excuse to not play Warzone anymore because fucking hell, man. I'm a bit... I don't know about you, peeps, but I'm a bit fucking burnt out on Warzone after spending all them hours on it on the weekend. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome to my world. It's all over play a Saturday, seven hours straight with Collie if I don't go football. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he wants to play. But um, yeah, overall, like you said, Webby, the package is great, I think. I'm halfway through the campaign. I've just done the big sort of open area because that's another thing they've sort of... I'm on you, they did have it last time, didn't they? It's sort of an open area thing. Yeah. Um, but this one, they've got a, like an open area with loads of... I mean, it's got three main missions to go and do, which you can go and do, but then there's loads of little side bits you can go and do. There's a Chivo for doing all of them, so that's why yeah. I did all I of them. I think I know but, what you um... mean. The stealth is still not, like... Maybe because I was playing it on easy mode. You don't have to be that stealthy, do you? No, I mean, I've never been a big stealthy gaming fan anyway, apart from maybe be the, the Hitman series. But, yeah, I don't really like it in these CODs, because CODs, is, for me, is all about running and gunning and that sort of thing. But they have, over the last few years, tried to change it up a bit, like, say, with the open areas, the stealthy bit, and even, like, this, the zombie bits. I've not got that far yet. I've not seen nothing oh. like that yet. But, oh, um... Spoilers, then. Well, no, I'm not, bo- I'm not bothered, but, um... Like I say, I'm 
I'm still enjoying it, and th th we've put a lot of time into the multiplayer, haven't we, Webby? Oh, um, even time. had a few uh, old school community members come on with us. Yeah, well, our um, username has come back to the fold this past yeah. week or so, which has been really nice to see. Yes, yeah, so we've had a few nights, haven't we, gaming with him and a few of us, and it's been... Yeah, it's been good fun. And like I say, it has got its glitches. I mean, the glitches I've had, obviously, last time I was on, it's said about I kept getting a black screen and having to reset it and stuff. But I've had nothing, nothing game-breaking this time, but I've noticed, like, sometimes when you're in the lobby, other people's ranks are all on one. You're not, it's not showing their ranks. Yeah. The other one I get is you pick an operator to stick with, and then when you're in the top three at the end, you, you're a completely different operator to what you've chosen things like that little things the but, good old days um, of uh, gears three when you had the achievements for everyone playing the certain characters and finishing like certain mm. waves of horde and you'd all load in and you'd like two three people would just like had their skins completely changed for no reason mm. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. i guess they'll iron out all these little glitches eventually yeah, they do update COD quite a lot, though, don't they? Yeah. They add so much to it, they're bound to break something, but they, they tend to yeah. be an update a couple of times a week, like bug fixes and stuff like that. I'll tell you something that's still like there, even after all these years, just the abuse you get online and stuff like that. Well, we add. don't really get that too much, because we're normally always in party chat, aren't we? So we yeah. don't really... No, I was in We don't really see or hit. I was Webby. Because, <laughs> 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 and then I was, I was called a fucking, um, what was I called, incest, I'm fucking my sister. I was like, yeah, I never had that. <laughs> and Webby apparently oh. is doing my girlfriend. I was like, cheers for that, mate. <laughs> <I know>. Brilliant. <laughs> well, I just popped yeah, in ten minutes before bed. Yeah, the only issue. I... Sorry, the the only issue I had with COD was the um, the mission where you've got to do all uh, the scuds, the open world section, um, and then you've got to go to the sites and you've got to blow the scud missiles up. Yes, and that's the, the mission one. I was on about. Yeah. Yeah, and I started doing. I did two of the scud miss missions, um, and then I came off it. And then when I went back to it, it put me right at the bloody beginning again. So I've got to do it all over again. So I don't know if that's just you've got to do all of it at once because that's quite a long yeah, time to do all of it. it. Yeah, I think I had that happen to me. I yeah, I only well. just I only done one scud, and then when I put it back on, I was back to the beginning. Because mm. oh, I was doing yeah, nice. I was, yeah, I was doing yeah. the scud missions, but I was also doing the side quests as well because they yeah you know, it quite intrigued me. So, yeah. yeah. And I haven't been back to it since because well I played the multiplayer with you guys, but I haven't been back to the multi to the story since because of that. It's pissed me off. I went on the zombies today, peeps, and I did invite you, but you didn't reply. No, I've been busy, message. mate. Yeah, so I, jo I went on zombies um, today with Laffer, one of the community members, and he all he plays is zombies, and we got quite far actually. Did because there's actually like a little mini story in there. So it always like, has been, like, yeah. with the Zombies games, yeah, there's, like, a lot of lore. Yeah, so we was doing that, stuff. and, yeah, it's, it's actually pretty good once you get that going. But, I'll tell you what, yeah, it's just good still hard. You can, um, yeah, you can pick what to install, so if you just want multiplayer or the campaign or Zombies or Warzone, so you don't have to install everything... Yeah, that's no, good yeah. if you're struggling for hard drive space. The only problem was, I wanted to play Zombies the other day with my mate on Twitch, I was like... Oh, I didn't select that to install. I was like, all right, so it's going to take like nearly two hours to install. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not playing. Well, Black Friday is a perfect time to buy yourself a bigger hard drive for your PlayStation or Xbox. Mm. The Xbox ones are quite expensive. I was looking at the Xbox hard drives. They're a lot more money than the PlayStation ones. I wish they were bigger. They only go up to two terabyte, don't they? And you have to buy one of these plug-in things, don't you, yeah. the Xbox? Yeah, well, I've yeah, got one. Yeah, it's like a plug-in yeah. SSD kind of mm. thing, isn't it? Like, yeah. Almost like a memory card. Yeah. Goes yeah, in the back. back. I mean, it's a good design, because you can have, I think, two of them in. Is it one or two? One. There's only one right. per console. Oh, right. There's only it's one slot one, in the console. Uh, yeah, yeah cause I've got a, not a regular spinny hard drive in, but obviously the actual series games that have to be on the SSD... So obviously yeah. the, the newer ones don't work, but a lot of the older Xbox and 360 games, they're fine that you can 
set them to eat stuff on. Plus, it's still annoying after all these, like, what, four years. It Like, you plug something into install, like the disc, and it still puts it on the wrong fucking hard drive, even though it's supposed to automatically put, you know, like, the Series X games on the SSD and the non-ones on oh, that. Oh, there's but... options in the settings to have which yeah, is your default. Like, yeah, choose. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there's a setting that let the Xbox choose which one needs it, but... I, I'll be honest, I don't know how people run the Series S's, because, I mean, I've got an X, and I don't really use my X much, but I've probably only got about six games on it, and it's like, it's full up. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm juggling around, it's like, I've got a game I'm going to talk about in a minute, it's like, oh, I'm going to have to delete this big game to put that on. It's Yeah, I had to do that yeah. even on the PlayStation yesterday, mm. I had to delete something, I'm like, mm. wow. I mean, haven't they still only, like, one terabyte after all these years? It's always been like that, though, it's always been... Right, it's money, though, isn't it, you know? Mm. Storage is money. Mm. Right, anyway, we've talked about COD. Um, we'll move to you, Stunty. Right, uh, I've got a few games on the go. Uh, I'll talk, what should I talk about? Should I talk about the one game I bought last week um, that I've bought on a console that I haven't bought, haven't played, as in, like, bought a game for it for years? Mm-hmm. I bought you Stalker 2. For a console you don't own. You bought Stalker 2? Oh, yeah, because you don't have Game Pass, do uh, you? No, I don't have Game Pass. Um, so, yeah, I bought Stalker 2 because I was very intrigued with it for quite a long time. Um, How much was out. it, don't they, brand new? Uh, um, About, it's 30 odd something quid, isn't it? It's 39.99, I think it was. Yeah. It's 40 oh, not quid. So, so, not yeah. like 70 quid or anything. No, no, I wouldn't have paid, no, I wouldn't have paid 70 if it was 70 quid. I don't buy it, any games at 70. It's not on PlayStation, is it? No, it's got an exclusivity. No, yeah. um, three months, I'm told. Oh, it came good. out the other day. Mm. Um, my thoughts on Stalker 2, because it's had quite mixed reviews and quite mixed of the game itself. I think it's fucking excellent. Yeah. I love it. Oh, cool. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's just what I wanted. It's a mixture of Fallout 3 with Daisy sort of menu systems and a little bit of a Daisy style to it as well. Stories, not really much of a story, you're just in this sort of Chernobyl and you're going around doing fetch quests, stuff like that. Um, but this game has got a bit of a old school PC to it, as in your, your weapons degrade, your weapons jam if they're knackered. Um, and when they jam, if you're in the middle of a fight, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, you've got a scrounge to look for ammo, stuff like that. You even go up to guns that are on the floor, and you can actually unload the gun to, to get the ammo. Um, there's no... If you shoot enemies, there's no levelling up. The levelling up is all done to do with the missions that you do, OK? But in the world that you're in... You can find things in the world. You can find better guns. You can find better uh, backpacks. Uh, not backpacks. Um, flak, uh, you know, the uh, armor stuff. Um, you drink Red Bull or vodka to uh, put your stamina up. Vodka Red Bull, uh, baby. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's also a bit in it as well where um, you could be... You've done a mission and you literally can have like a, like you'd have in um, Call of Duty, the, all of a sudden the world, you've got to get out of that zone and you have got to get out of that zone yeah. quick. You, if you don't get out of that zone, you're dead. Um, and that's when it starts to cause problems because I tried three times, couldn't get out of the zone quick enough. It's because I was carrying too much stuff. I wasn't over encumbered but I had too much stuff still, so I couldn't run quick enough. I put my gun away as well to make me run quicker. There's there's a lot to this game, as in, I don't know what it is, but I just, I just love it. It has its faults. It has a lot of faults, I will say that. Graphically-wise, it's a fucking mess. Um, you can have bits where you get pop-ins, games still loading in. Uh, you can get bits where an enemy will just appear, um, as in, like, you get these monsters, like dogs and stuff, and all of a sudden, they will just appear out of nowhere. And you're like, oh, where did they come from? All out my ass, classic. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
if you die, it does the perfect thing which really pisses you off. It tells you how many times you've died. <laughs> and I'm up to 20 now, so I'm doing well. Um, and the loading time is really slow. So if you do die, it's a pain in the arse. Um, what else is there to say? Oh, you've played it as well, have you, Webby? Yeah, so I was just going to... I was waiting, just, just listening to you. So I've not. I've probably not played as much as you. I've played about three or four hours. Yeah, I'm about the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it took me a while to get into it, to be honest, because the yeah, first same. hour I was a bit like, oh, this is a bit. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, I thought that I died within the first ten minutes of playing the game. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, what the fuck? And it's basically Nubenstein. So, well, it's actually a teachable moment, I think. Mm. Um, so basically, there's no hand holding. There's no handholding, but it's basically there's these oh, what are they called not voids. Um, yes, is it void uh, anomalies? Uh, yeah, uh, and anomalies. anomalies. That's the word. There's these anomalies scattered throughout the world because obviously it's irradiated. It's in it's set in Chernobyl, um, but basically they can kill you really easily. So at, at the beginning of the game, I was like I got no loot, um, and there was this like this electric ball like going around in a big a- area mm-hmm. in this pipe. And I thought, I'm going to quickly loot this dude who I've just killed. And as I was looting the dude, the lightning ball anomaly came past and killed me. Mm. And I was like, oh. And I've died a few times, but the, but, but, but but you learn because it's like you, you have like a radiation clicker thing and then you can get damaged by going into the radiation place. And there's also these other things. So I went into an area like a poppy field, but I was in there for too long and, and it knocked me out and put me to sleep. And then yeah. I lost some stuff. I got like some dude saved me and put me in like this house thing. But it, it's a weird game because it's like Metro to me. I love the Metro games, but in a mm. big open world. And I and before I played it, I was a little bit of trepidation because a lot of the reviews and that I read was, "Oh, it's a buggy mess. Don't play it yet. It needs to cook for another mm. year." Blah blah blah. And I was like, I'm going to play this anyway. I'm going to check it out. And I've been playing it on PC. And um, I've put it all like... So basically, I loaded the game up and it put everything on Ultra. And I was like, it's not running great. So I knocked it all down to high and it runs nice. It looks great. Um, Loads of different weather effects in the game. A proper day and night cycle. Um, and I've only actually seen two glitches since I've play, been playing the game. And one of them was this dude got up from the bar and his headphones were hanging behind him in midair. It looked really weird. <laughs> and the other one was I went, I was on a mission today and this dude was laying in bed dead, but his body started floating in the air like he was possessed. Uh, <laughs> and then it stopped right. midair like it was a proper bug. Those are the only bugs I've seen. Not game breaking, just a bit funny. Nothing, you know. Those are the sort of things we've seen in Fallout games and stuff. But anyway, yeah, mm. Bethesda games sort of get away with it, and they've yeah. had the same thing for you. But obviously, you, I suppose we can cut the devs a little bit of slack. You know how how rough they've had this. You know, developing the game. Yeah, well, well, yeah, well, you obviously they're a Ukrainian stu- studio. A few of their dev team have been killed in the war. Mm. Um. They had to move their offices. I watched their documentary on YouTube. It's about an hour and a half long. They had to move their office. Then the Russians hacked them and stole all their code and leaked an early build of the game online. Um, you know, so, you know, they've had it all against them. But actually, it's not as bad as what no. many other big games that have come out because... You remember how everyone was moaning about cyberpunk when that came out being a broken mess? Mm. Nothing on that level at all. You know what I mean? It's a playable game. No. Um, obviously, yeah. This... Go on, peeps. I was just about to say, I'm sure I've read it's getting patched this week. It's, it's been patched, patched a few yeah. times already. I mean, it's probably going to get patched for ages. So, I mean, the only bug I've had is I've <sighs> had a couple of times where you're on a mission... And then you go and do something or other, and then the mission doesn't it doesn't give you the guide, the uh, thing on the map to tell you where to go. And then all of a sudden it then appears. I've had that a couple of times. Right. Um, okay. The other thing is... Like the other, you have to work it out yourself. Well, yeah. I mean, I do look at the map quite a lot. The other thing as well is it's real time. 
So mm -hmm. if you're if you're somewhere on a mission and you start going into your menu system and you're sort of like you've picked up a gun or you've picked up a bit of you know loot or something over and you start looking at it, if you're not careful, you start getting bloody shot. Yeah. You know, because all of a sudden, I mean, I had one mission, I was in this building and basically when I had to speak to this guy, guy was an arsehole, so I shot him in the head because that's what you had to do. You either shot him or you let him survive. Um, so I shot him in the head, started looting in the corner. The next thing you know, these dudes came in the room and started shooting me. Well, shit, I'm in the bloody menus here. And I was getting shot. So, <laughs> yeah, you've got, yeah, you've got to be on the ball with this game. And that's what I quite like about it. It's got that, in my eyes, it feels like I'm playing a multiplayer game, like an open world war zone, but in a Chernobyl environment. Um, because the other thing as well is if you get spotted, and you do get spotted quite easy on this, um, they can shoot you from quite a way away. And the problem I find is I struggle to figure out where they are sometimes. And I haven't got, uh, I have got a scope on my, uh, at the moment, but I can't figure out how you put it on the gun. Um, so I've been to the ammo bloke and he, I can't really work out how to do it. So I'm going to have to sort of do a bit more research on that. But you know, I really like it. I think it's a really cool game. Um, and I'm pleased I did pick it up because, to be honest, I never really buy anything new anymore because every time I buy a new game, I always feel like I'm disappointed. And this is the first game in a long time I've picked up. And I'm, you oh, know, Quick question it, for you, Stanley. Hmm. If it's only a three-month um, exclusivity on Xbox, you being, a, like myself, a PlayStation fanboy, <laughs> why <laughs> did you again. not wait three months and purchase it on PlayStation? Cause well, it's probably been me. patched and updated and... Because I didn't know that before I bought it. <laughs> oh, I see. But then, to Fair be honest, enough. I could always buy it again, couldn't I? <laughs> you yeah, just sell the Xbox nice version. You play on the system, you don't necessarily always play on all the time. Yeah, I mean, I do switch the Xbox on, but I seem to be... All I seem to be doing on the Xbox is playing games that I've already played on the PlayStation, like Cyberpunk or Red Dead Redemption yeah. 2, and it's like, I've already played them once, and it's like... Do I really want to play a massive game like that again that I've already played once where Stalker 2 is something new? And I don't know, I was just intrigued by it quite a while back, actually. And then also because the price was a nice price as well, you know, 40 quid. Um, the only thing was is that I was a little bit annoyed about is that um, there's hardly anything on the disc. It's all a download. Oh, it's a typical, days, the, typical yeah. mi the typical Microsoft bullshit. Don't put anything on the disc. That's both so, of them. They all do it. Well, apparently uh, they had a huge no, day. Sony's not as bad. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, Nintendo are better than both of them yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But, yeah I just want to know what's going to happen when we find out, like, some of these games, they're taking that off the server. So you, even though you've got the disc, you can't mm. get the rest of the game. That's going to be annoying, isn't it? Well, I mean, at the moment, it's going to be a long time. I mean... I've got a fin anyway on that because, I mean, you can still download stuff on the PS3 uh, and the 360, can't you? If you own it, it might get delisted, but if you actually own it, you can still download it. I mean, I've had stuff on the PS3 because one of my PS3s, I put a big hard drive in it and I've downloaded all the stuff off of PS Plus mm. and stuff I owned onto it. And it, it, you can still get it all, um, even if it's not available to buy anymore. No, they haven't removed that. I think it's only for the developer turns around and says, no, we want it removed completely. You know, um, just do what I do. If you, you know, by that time, 10 years time, if you've still got your Xbox Series X, you could download it onto it and it just stay on there forever because you'd probably be able to get an SSD that plugs in the front for about 20 pound in 10 years time, wouldn't you? Be nice. Uh, when you get yeah. done with uh, Stalker anyway, uh, Stunty, it might be worth you having a look at a, a game called Chernobylite. Which yeah, I've got that. Is, you know, it's, yeah, it's I've got that. too bad. It's it's yeah. not open world. You obviously... It's linear. Yeah, I did play a bit of it. ...going into a little area, but and it's more kind of survival crafting game. Mm. But that's also got like the supernaturally kind of weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, I did play a bit well. of Chernobyl. It didn't really grab me, though. I don't know what it was. There was something about it. I think it was a little bit rough around the edges. Um, it's it's to... an indie game sort mm. of thing. Like, it was like around a 30-odd quid sort of game. So, I think it's on PS Plus, actually. Um, Quite possibly. I, have seen it on I, I think it's on every platform as well. Yeah. But, um, no, 
my impressions of Stalker 2, it's really, you know, I'm really enjoying it. And But like you said, Webby, the first half, oh, I'm not really sure about this. And the other thing as well, I noticed that the, um, I don't know what it's like for you because you've got PCs. When it's dark, it's fucking dark. I had to really turn all the brightness up. Yeah, um, well, there is a gamma thing in the in the settings mm. of the game itself. Yeah, I had to, to set tweak. all of that up really yeah. high. Yeah. And yeah. then the other thing I had as well, which I've noticed they've patched since, because uh, when I played, because I played it on launch, oh, my God, it was all over the place for the controller. It was like fucking hell. It was just so loose. So I turned all the sensitivity down, um, and then they must, uh, to make it so it's perfect, then they patched it, and then it, my sensitivity was all really slow then. So then I had to oh, play around with it again. Oh, no, well, I'm playing yeah. it. I'm using controller on PC. I'm using my Xbox 360 controller on PC, and it mm. feels fine. Yeah, it's all right now, but I think they must have done a patch on it again. So, um, but, yeah, no, give it a go if you've got Game Pass, because, you know, um, it, it is well worth a go, but you've got to get past the first hour or two. I have been told from podcasts I've been listening to, but actually, re- it gets even better when you get about 14 to 16 hours in. Well, like, bloody well the hell. map is fucking huge, man. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's three massive. times bigger than Fallout, I've been told. Three wow. times bigger. Jesus. Yeah, that's, yeah wow. it's huge. Yeah, that's what I was told. <sighs> yeah. And that Fallout was massive, wasn't it? Oh, and there's no oh, yeah. fast travel. No oh, fast man. travel. Are you put, actually putting me off this game? <laughs> I think there, I saw a video that said how to fast travel in there on YouTube. I've never seen fast travel in it yet. I know, so but I, I, yeah. yeah, I saw a YouTube video. Just you could kind of expect if you like set up a base somewhere that you could travel between the two bases mm. or something. Or that. Yeah, I've not know. seen any fast travel yet. Perhaps it unlocks later, and we just yeah, it could like, do. Stunt, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't that's, know. That's what happens at fourteen hours. You unlock the fast travel, and it makes yeah. it <laughs> Yeah, and then 15 hours, you finish the game. <laughs> I've been told it's about 30 hours, the game, okay. if you really want to just finish it. So it That'd be like not... 90 for me, then. I'll be about seven <laughs> for Sly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for Peebs, well, he's not that he's interested anymore. Uh, Chivos are okay-ish. I've had, I'm up to 45 already, I think it is. So, you know, so they are there. I haven't really looked at the Chivos, because I don't really look on Xbox at what you get for chivos anyway uh, yeah i just looked at the video quickly it takes it, you could only fast travel between the really big cities oh uh, that's good enough okay. and it, and it yeah. takes you a good 10 hours or so 10 to 15 hours to get right, to the okay. city so mm. yeah so a little bit of fast travel not unlimited fast travel yeah yeah is that there's no over incumbents and all that crap? Yeah, is there, there is. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I said that earlier. So, so yeah. this is what I was going to oh, say. I'm a fucking holder, like I'd end up like, <laughs> yeah, I know. just laying on the floor, can't move. Oh, like. So, so I will admit something. I have modded my game already. Oh, oh God! Infinite sake. inventory slots. <laughs> oh, <laughs> infinite stamina, money to eat or sleep. Just don't mm. want to be fucking. I had to do the same on Starfield, mate. I can't. Fu- yeah. I can't deal with fucking. Starfield was a ball like fucking oh, filled up. With yeah, shit. as long as I can <laughs> hold infinite items, I'm happy. So, yeah. Mm. Not a true gamer. Well, I think they knifed is... that back in like the 360 and older because the games didn't have enough memory for you to hold everything. But now they pretty much have, and I think they just use it as a way to like be make the game longer. Well, yeah, be annoying as well. Yeah, because inventory management is just a pain in the arse. Like on this, it's a little bit like Tarkov, where you see your backpack and that, and you got you have all your squares and you got to fill them in. Oh fuck that shit! It's one of just fucking pick crap up. Job done. So I looked on here, and it just says that the PS5 release is possibly coming out February the twentieth. Possibly, uh, no. Possibly, yeah. But, I don't think it'll be that quick, to be perfectly no, honest. No, but I also think that Sony might not want it out until it's actually working properly, because after the cyberpunk debunk, you know, grief, they're probably... Uh, so what they do, give it to Xbox to, to bring out a broken mess. And then yeah, but it's Sony not a broken mess, is it? I mean, I, no, it's I, not. No. No, no, I don't have a problem, but a lot of people are really... I don't know, I just feel like a lot of people really slating the game, and I just don't think oh, I think it's Russian that. bots. 
Yeah, I, I, I did laugh at the fact I think some people were like, oh, the Stalker game's full of bugs, and someone put, so it's a Stalker game then, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> because apparently the original one was quite buggy. Yeah. Yes, but, yeah, I was told that. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's good. Um, well worth playing. I think you'll enjoy it, Peeves, actually. You get to play it. Um, I, I like the sound of the, mm. like the Fallout, like the yeah. Chernobyl, the sort of Metro vibes, but I'm not mm. sure about the... The real tight game time, so when you pause it, you're still getting shot. I don't the the management system of like you know, um, I had that in Fallout. And that was one of the. I mean, I can't turn it off like what Webby does, but I know in Fallout, I replayed Fallout um, uh, Three recently, didn't I? After the Fallout, um, mm, not Fallout TV Three, show. it was uh, after the TV show Fallout Four. I replayed that on the PlayStation, and that was one of the, my biggest gripes with that. Is just having to you, having to unload different guns and just like oh, I, want, I want to keep these but now you've got to get rid of one because you're too heavy yeah, that does annoy that me that that sort of... there, there isn't all I'm going to say is on that where Fallout had all the guns everywhere Stalker will have the guns everywhere but they'll be the same gun as what you already got you're not going to see lots right. of different yeah. guns all the time but so, and they, you but, want to but they do degrade. Sell. That's the thing. That's so, right. Yeah. Oh, right. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, they degrade and then they jam. So what happened was, is I was on a mission. Well, it can't be any these clash dudes. Of then, because they're like supposed to be pretty reliable guns. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, yeah, basically my gun jammed. So you push the reload button, and then uh, I went to fire it again, and it went ding, jammed. So I had to reload again. And in the end, it was like I then had to sort of run off into the other room, swap to a different gun, as in because, you know, you can do it there, but you go to the pistol, and then I realised the other gun had no ammo in it because I didn't have any. So it was like, so it was just... Yeah. You you can repair them a at the... with one in the chamber. Uh, yes, yeah, you, you can, can repair, repair them. the ammo, man, and you can mod your weapons as well. Yes. Um, to make them more, more more durable and stuff as well. So yes, you can yeah. do that. Um, the the one thing I did notice, just the last thing, I don't know if you've had this, Webby, is I went to, when I went to the shop that actually set, uh, you could buy and sell stuff, yeah. the bloke would not buy my guns that were damaged. Oh, I've not, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't touch them, fucker. I wanted oh, to get rid of my oh, three <laughs> guns are all mullered, because that's the other thing, if you go into the menu, which is very DayZ, actually, the menu system, on the actual, of your inventory, it will show you the gun, and it will have a, have a heart on it. And if it's red with a crack, it's, it's knackered. It's fucked, yeah. Yeah, it's fucked. Well, that's, yeah. that's good now, because now you know that whenever a weapon's gone tits up, you can just ditch it. You can just Well, that's what it. I did. And, yeah, yeah, I just ditched the loads. Yeah, just all out in the road. So some bloke's going to weigh all them in for scrap. <laughs> so. Yeah, good game. Yes, yeah, good. Yes, good. Um, Darren. I'll you updated. We'll go to Darren now. Uh, yeah, I'll just basically talk about a, a demo for a game I played this weekend, uh, Dynasty Warriors Origins. Oh. The latest iteration of the Dynasty Warriors franchise that kind of basically ended up going to Dynasty Warriors 9, which was like an open-world nightmare full of nothing, uh, and the big epic battles that were once confined to small little maps that you basically ran around on uh, were sort of just a complete shit show, What's really. This game? Uh, and this Dynasty? Dynasty, Dynasty War. Warriors Origins. Origins, yeah. sorry, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's due out January next year. There's a playable demo for it on PC, Xbox and PlayStation, or PS5, I think. Um, I quite liked the way it looked in the trailers. It looked like they'd upped the enemy numbers and all that kind of stuff to make it feel more like a realistic sort of battlefield uh, that you're sort of like traipsing across. It's the the traditional like one versus a hundred kind of gameplay, hack and slashy. Uh, but this one they've added more tactics to it. So you play as someone uh, who's basically like known as the Nameless Warrior. Uh, and you slot into the history of the Three Kingdoms era of China, um, which is like well known if you're a, played any of the Dynasty Warriors games before. You start off with the different eras, and you have different battles that sort of take place throughout history because this this is loosely based on real people and real battles that actually took place. Um, so. 
you lead an army in the demo uh, during the Dong Zhuo campaign, who's basically like a tyrannical ruler who sort of took control of China. Um, and, yeah, you basically beat the living shit out of everything uh, with all of your different companions. It has the traditional sort of Dynasty Stories gameplay in the fact that there is like the sort of square, square, triangle move set but it has slightly changed. It's not as classic as it was, but I'm kind of not pissed off with it. So it's not as basic as nine where just Y did a sweeping attack and square just did your combo hits. Um, you can also tie in two lots of abilities, one of which basically are, are move skills that you have on the weapon that you've got chosen because you can change your weapons. You can have, like, short sword, chakram, pole arm, all sort of things like that with different move sets. Uh, and then there's another lot where you basically bring up, like, a... I think they call it the eagle eye strategy view or something, where it kind of zooms up above the battlefield a little bit. And then if you've got soldiers around you, you can issue them orders like you can issue them to charge into the enemy if there's like a barricade you can get them to sit back and like fire a, an arrow volley or basically sort of like guard against a, an enemy attack that's coming in okay that sounds cool so there's a lot to it there's there's so much going on like during some of these battle battles as well that you'll have enemies guarding gates and you'll be basically beating the crap out of the generals and the the troops that are holding the gate and when it's destroyed you'll see your entire army kind of rock up behind you and then you get a load of soldiers run up with a battering ram and they start like battering the doors through so you can then progress to the rest of the map kind of a thing also, during the big battles, you'll come across certain named officers that will occasionally, while you're beating them up, challenge you to a duel. And doing so will basically, all of the troops will sort of disperse into a big circle and watch your one-on-one -on -one battle with the, the general, which will obviously lower or increase morale, depending, obviously, how well you, you do in the duel. Because it seems to be that this is mainly about building up the morale of the army. Because when you're on horseback, you can kind of cheer your troops before charging in or sort of like speed boost yourself further along on your horse. Which brings me to the fact that was the only part of the controls I did not like, and that is clicking in the left thumbstick brings, uh, makes you jump onto your horse. Whereas in so many other games, that, that makes you run faster or, or gives you like a speed boost. Whereas in that, I'd be sort of like fighting an officer and then accidentally get on my horse in the middle of it. There's also, some people have been basically saying this reminds them of like a, a Souls game. Really? And I've got no idea why. No, it's just a fast uh, action paced. Um... Sort of, yeah, but there's, of there's game, I think it's the fact that there's a classic thing in the dynasty warriors one of the most famous warriors in all of chinese history lu bu uh who was basically like this immensely powerful warrior who, who was under dong zhuo's command um and he guards hu lao gate which is basically one of the final sort of things to get to his realm as it were or, or part of land that he owned like strategically um, and during the end of the game, you complete the mission by sort of taking the gate, but then he turns up. So I think you can just run off, but you can actually fight him if you want, and he's obviously way harder. Um, and in this Dynasty Warriors, you've now got the ability to sort of dodge and also, like, guard, like perfect guard attacks. So if you guard just at the right moment when an officer or someone's attacking you, you'll knock them back and do, like, a counter hit. Which nice. you can then sometimes follow up with, like, a load of rush attacks and everything. Uh, I was... The only reservations I have with the game, personally, is I don't know if there's a levelling system to this game, which is one of the things that I've always liked about the Dynasty games. 
is it gives you replayability. You can go into all these different modes and you're constantly levelling up your characters. So you always feel like you're progressing and you're, you're, you're still doing something, even if you're redoing old stuff you've already done. Um, and also I've got a feeling this is probably only going to go up to maybe the end of the Three Kingdoms era, which is like your Wushu and... Um... Oh, God. Well, I can't remember the name of the other faction. Way. So this um, is pretty much, if you're into that Japanese kind of history, it follows the history of... Sort of. I mean, I only ever... I only ever got into the, the 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 story of the Three Kingdoms through the the Dynasty Warriors games. Because uh, the interesting thing is, if you are playing through those Dynasty games, uh, if named people die in those battles in real life, that's generally it. You don't get to control those characters again in subsequent battles going forward. So there's some pretty powerful warriors. Uh, one of which is like a bodyguard for Sao Sao. Uh, who dies quite early on in the story. Um, so you don't particularly, in some of the older games, you're outside of free mode, which is kind of like where you could choose any officer to play through any level, um, you couldn't play as in past certain parts of the story. But then you're always joined by other officers. But the, you've, in some of the later games, they bring in another faction, Jin, which are basically another lot that sort of kind of appear towards the end of the Three Kingdoms era. It's a fascinating part of Chinese history, all yeah. of that. It's almost like the Warring States of Japan, but the China's version nice. of it. Um, so, yeah, the, the character roster's slightly reduced, although there are some of the newer characters there from some of the latter games. But, unfortunately, I think one of my favourite characters I've always liked playing, uh, Zhu Rong, who's the wife of Meng Ho, the bandit king, I don't know if we're ever going to get to the point where that part of the story is where they're in it. Because I've got this is kind of being set up as kind of like something for the fans of the older games, but at the same time like a soft reboot of the series. Because they kind of finished what they were doing originally with 8, which eh, they were, I, I like 8, but there are still aspects of it I hate. Um, seven, I think, was best for the story and stuff, but a lot of people don't like the claimed move sets. And nine was just a travesty. So they, they've kind of obviously gone back to the drawing board with this one. Nice. So, 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 so what's the release date on this? Uh, mid January. Okay, so it's not too far away and the, then. Yeah, the demo itself on on PS5, the demo. If you've got a pro, it's pro enabled. There you go, peeps. A game for your pro. Um, so I was running it on, I think it was like graphics settings at 60 FPS and I didn't notice any slowdown or anything at all, which is when you consider how many enemies are flapping around on screen at a time, it's quite impressive. Yeah. And you've got obviously the big attacks that send like troops flying through the air in swathes. So oh, I I, I'm, I'm very happy with what I played anyway. Excellent. It's good to hear. Yes. <clears throat> Cheers, Darren. That sounds good, mate. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to you, peeps. I, I, I'm not going to talk about any of my games this week because there's low, loads of us on. I'm going to save mine for next week. So uh, we'll go back to peeps. Well, I'll just talk about um, a little game because I know Stunty's obsessed with it. Um, my little 16p game um, that I bought <laughs> off the playstation store 16 i was looking for, yeah i was looking through the the sale and i was just looking for all the games and there was a game that came up for 16p and i was like what on earth is this oh, anyway looked at, looked at it it's called biolab and it's um no biolab wars and it's like a 16-bit side scroller shoot em up it's like an old school something That's you get cool. on the mega drive or the super nintendo but it's actually quite good fun like i say 16p couldn't believe it so yeah i just purchased it and i'll put a little bit of time into it again stunty was oh you're doing it for trophies no actually i didn't even look at the trophies before i bought it and um looking at them they are quite hard because there's one for because it's old school it's you get three lives and that's it and there's like eight levels um and one of the trophies is for completing it without losing a life well that ain't gonna happen the controller throwing uh, achievement or trophy or <laughs> call that. 
There was one yeah. like that in uh, Death Smiles where I'd always get to like the last level or something and something would happen and it's like, you fuck it up. It looks like <laughs> yeah. a, uh, a... I'm just watching a video and it looks like a NES game. Yeah, it's like a Mega Drive Ned Knight's pay, NES mate. game. <laughs> yeah, 16p that cost me, so... Is that a Pence Pie? I'm enjoying bit? it, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, you can play as four... There's four different characters... Get different weapons and stuff, but yeah, it's just. Uh, and then there's like a. They're only like two, three minute levels, but some of them are quite challenging. Then you've just got like an end boss. Um, but yeah, um, um, it's filling the gap again. Like earlier, it's like a game you can just pick up and play for fifteen, twenty minutes without sinking too much time into. Nice. Would get stunt his input, but he's muted at the moment. He's too busy. Um, he's probably playing on the phone, games. Or he? nip to the little boys' mm. room or something. Yeah, so I'll talk about another one quickly, where big things that didn't take too long, because obviously we've both been playing it. Um, yep. GTA, the um, definitive I think was, edition. Yes. Yeah, it was. It was doing a. They were doing a sale, weren't they, on Amazon? Fifteen quid for all free, free games. So uh, I think there's quite a few people in the community picked it up, and I thought, oh, fifteen quid, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pick that up, and um, I've installed it onto my. PlayStation and they started. It, haven't they, with yeah. lots of yes, well, stuff. I think that's why a lot of people sort of went back to it because thinking because obviously it came out what a year, two years ago, and everyone was moaning, you know, nah, like it should have just stayed where it was because it's unplayable. And I think I did. I think one of them came to Game Pass. I think it was San Andreas on Game Pass, and was it Vice City on the PlayStation? They didn't release yeah, all three, yeah, did they? Yeah. Yeah, so I think I did GT. Uh, I did San Andreas for a little bit on the play on the Xbox, but it was yeah quite. It's quite hard getting back into. But once I uh, spoke to Webby about it, and Webby was like, "Well, I'm going to start with GTA Three first, and then do them in order type thing." I said, "Well, that's quite a good idea." I so anyway, I start because proper dated now because was- yeah, it does. Because my first instinct is to go straight to Vice City, because that's probably one of my f- all-time favourite video that's games of all time. Yeah, because just for the I just like the '80s style of the neon lights, Miami type vibes, Miami yeah. Vice type vibes, the music. Um, so that's my. Yeah, that was what I was gonna go straight to, but then I thought, well, no, Webby makes sense. Let's start with three. And I hadn't played three since it came out originally. Same here, um, mate. Yeah. And. Yeah, it, obviously the graphics and everything's dated, but it does it does play quite well. It doesn't feel doesn't feel loose or anything like that. Um, the driving's pretty good on it. Um, yeah, it's pretty much what I remember, um, very, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. Because like, because I looked online, peeps, and I couldn't I couldn't believe that this game came out in 2001 originally. Because when I started playing it on the Xbox, I it was earlier than that. No, 2001. Yeah, I thought I looked, it was earlier. Yeah, I looked it up, mate. Yeah, 2001. Came out a couple of weeks. I got delayed to after nine eleven because the taxis in GTA three were like yellow because sort of basically set in New York but not. So they changed a lot of stuff and changed the colour of the uh, taxis okay. and the police cars and stuff like that. But they did add a few more bits to this and like um like you can shoot and you shoot and move at the same time where you couldn't you didn't used to do that. Oh right. On the GTA 3 and a few other bits. So basically what Rockstar done, they've completely removed the developers who did this port. They just completely removed their name from the, the opening credits. And they've just oh, really? done it themselves. Yeah, they've completely looked at the it's stuff. That's what they should do in the first place. To rebuild it ourselves, like yeah, well, I think they've basically ported the mobile versions, which were better versions than what they done. And they've put back, like, the light and, syst- you know, like, the light and the fog. And, like, you know, like, in Vice City where you've got, like, that heat, sort of, like, orange glow to it? They've put all that stuff yeah. back into it. But, yeah, basically, that's just that. And they're hoping now that Rockstar have basically re-released it again and done it themselves. You know, a lot of people are talking in the communities about them maybe doing, like, a 4K 60 frames per second patch and things like that. But That would be nice. But the, the thing that I like about it, so I've only been playing G, GTA 3, because that's what I, what I wanted to do, did them in order. And I'll tell you what, it's such a um, kind of time capsule, because 
the music is all that, you know, it's all that music, like all proper music from the day, you know, like the dance it's music or the pop music and all that from the time, you know what I mean? Um, and you just get those nostalgia vibes when you're playing it, just, just listening to that music, which is, which is fascinating. And also, mo mobile phones back then weren't really a thing, so your character's got a pager, then you've got to find a pay phone, you know, all those sort of things that you kind of I forgot what, what society was like back then. Um, gra- graphically, I think they've actually, because I actually looked at a video um, comparing the PlayStation version, originally the, the PS2 version, to this, and they've actually done an all right job, I think. And it took me a while to get used to the graphics, but it just feels like now, as I'm playing it, like a stylized version of a Grand Theft Auto game. And, yeah, the missions are pretty basic, but there is a story thread there. But oh, I, I just think it's a fun game. Uh, the only thing that I do find annoying is the shooting, because when you hold down the left trigger, it locks on to, like, the nearest yeah, person. It, it doesn't all the lock-on look. shooting, yeah. Yeah, it's just annoying. But apart from that, it's... Yo, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Do all the old yeah, I think... codes work with these versions? Um, yeah. Do they? Oh, that's cool. I do that. they? Yeah. Well, you could spawn do, does that stop you getting trophies, trophies, though? Yeah, uh, they used to. I think so. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, it's, I, think I, mean, it's... Save, I think if you save the game... After you use the cheats, then it changes the colour of, like, your save, if you know what I mean. Like, if you play it on, if you play the game on normal, it would be that. And if it was easy... Yeah, that rings a bell. I think San Andreas used to do that, didn't Yeah, I think you can use the cheats, but don't save after. And then you'll be fine. But the thing is, it's really hard games to complete without cheating. I mean, it's, I mean, there have been some, I mean, when we was in party chat the other day while I was playing it, there's some frustrating, like, going around, and you have to uh, bash vehicles so they blow up and stuff, and it seems to take ages, and then you get the cops chasing you, then your car blows up before the car you're trying to bloody blow up blows up, so then you're having to chase around trying to get into another car, then chasing a few blocks around to catch the car back up. Um... But yeah, it's the first, like, oh, you probably correct me if I'm wrong, but my memory's, you know, I'm an old man now, so my memory's getting bad, but it's the sort of first sort of open world game I remember playing. It, it was I the first like, 3D Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I remember it being the first, wow. um, but I don't remember a lot of big, big open world type games in, at that point in time. Obviously now there are, you know, loads no, of games like it. They were just like kind it, but... of a game that you could just, as well, just stick on and muck about in for like an hour. Before you were mm. like just just running That's around most blowing everything up with a bazooka, the, get the cops to chase people. you. <clears throat> well, yeah, you can get sidetracked. I mean, obviously, there's other bits and bobs in there, like the taxi. You can go around just picking up taxi fares, and I think there's the um, the fire and the ambulance. You can go and pick up people, or take them to the hospital, and oh yeah, I remember the. It's a Pete. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think is it in well, Vice City was the pizza pizza one, wasn't it? Pizza deliveries was that Vice City or San Andreas? One of the two, but yeah, yeah you can get sidetracked. But um, because I've got so much to play at the minute, I'm trying not to get too sidetracked on it. I want to just try and concentrate on the main missions because obviously I think there's a trophy for bloody collecting the hundred packages as well, oh, which I I haven't even come across yet. You'd this have to definitely use a guide for that. Used to have the uh, the old um, Brady's guides or whatever it was. Yeah. Well, like oh, when a GTA that. one came out, like I always used to buy them because oh, you kind of need them, especially was it was it GTA four that had like the pigeons you had to find. It was four, yeah, yeah, yeah it was four. I remember now because many people were trying to. We were discussing this in party gym. We couldn't remember which which one, and then I, and then I did remember it was, it was four, obviously yeah. back then as well. Game facts and stuff was just like mainly a tech site. Yeah. So people wouldn't stick up screenshots of the locations and things. It was just all descriptive. Yeah, I bet you and Stunty have got a load of them books, didn't you? Them guidebook game. What the GTA? from back in the day? Because I think some of well, yeah, any like the like, used to get loads, like didn't you? Directory, aren't they? Uh, yeah, but I think a lot. Some of them now are like collector's items. I've seen going them on eBay for like fifty, sixty quid. And wow, it's not a massive right amount of money, but I think Fantasy mm, Seven one. I've yeah, got a few. I've got, yeah, I've got like um, Resident Evil Four. 
Got the guide for that. Silent Hill. I've got two. a few hundred. Um, yeah, I've got a few. I, 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 I... Oh, we lost some. <laughs> What's what happened there? Oh, hello? Yeah, he yeah. disappeared on me for a second. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I heard yeah. him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I must have just been my end. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's. I think it's a good. I mean, I picked it up in on digital on Xbox. I think it was like nineteen quid on the digital sale, which I don't think is t- is too bad. But fifteen quid for a physical, I think, is a, a right bargain, babe. So, yeah, I got it from Amazon, and it was here ten o'clock next morning. Bloody happy days. days. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I haven't really got um, many physical. Games, but I've now got um, FC25 and Grand Theft Auto Definitive Edition, so I've got two discs now. Ooh. Jeez, you're going to have to get a bigger house the way you're going. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm already outgrown my man cave, uh, all the crap I'm collecting. Xbox um, triple pack of the that trilogy. Yeah, I've still got the what the PS2. No, there's the Xbox version. Like the oh, yeah, the yeah. Xbox. Oh, yes, yes. I, yeah, I've had a few of them over the years. Well, not recently. Well, not just free in Vice City and then San Andreas later. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it was like a double pack and then I bought San Andreas mm. separate. My memory's not that good. I'm just looking at my games. Yeah, I've got it on the PS2, but I never play it, to be honest. Yeah, so, yeah that was um, Grove Street Games, the developer who ported the game that are no more. I think they're shutting down as well. No, I did a fucking shit job, didn't I? Because I remember when the trilogy came out, and the reason I never bought it was because of all the horror stories I saw yeah, on I, YouTube and that. About I think I bought shit it for a tenner. I think they patched it a bit, but it was one of these weird ones where rather than just port the original games or the mobile games and make them slightly better HD, they did this weird, like, AI upscale thing. Uh... And, it, and it just broke everything. Like... If you were playing um, uh, up until even recently, like this newest, latest patch or re-update, but if you were playing um, San Andreas and you were like CJ on the... If you went on a mountain bike, his head would disappear up his own ass. <laughs> things like that. It was just like really weird animations that didn't work. I think he was... He's basically on a... Half on a BMX and half on a quad bike. So they sh- they of... should actually uh, bring back some stuff from San Andreas because that was the one where you could go to the gym and you could get more muscly if you ate loads of food yeah. you got fat and you'd have to run for ages to burn it off and things. And I don't think many games have done that since. And that oh, was yeah, ages ago. De- well, I think there was actually more detail and things you could do in GTA 4 than GTA 5. Yeah. Like a lot of think There's a few videos online comparing... You know, just the amount of stuff. But for how long they take to make games, well, over a decade between five and six is going to be like nearly 12, 13 years. Who's going to I actually I suppose you appear? had the, you know, the three protagonists you swapped between as well, didn't you, in five constantly. So Yeah, and stuff like that. But the amount of stuff that people just never see, and it's like, oh, great, I worked like three months on that, constantly working 12 hours six days a week and nobody I always there. think of that when I'm watching people play through certain games that I like where I walk for an hour and like oh look at the detail on that that's so well done or everything and then like you watch a stream and they're like right boys and straight through the area don't <laughs> take in any details or anything and there's probably some dev watching that stream just wiping a tear out the corner of his eye <laughs> it's even just things like when you shoot out the tyres of cars and the tyres burst and then if you drive the car with like tyres Running and on its rims and that. Yeah, and then the, the like even some modern games now don't have things like that. Yeah, oh, that's mad, eh? You know, it's just the amount of detail they and effort they put into these older games, but now they just make so put so much money into marketing and re- release buggy, broken games. It makes you interested into what they're going to do for GTA Six because obviously they are being quite, like you say, with all these games, quite innovative and um what they're actually going to do with this you know obviously the rumors are it's going to be a, a man and like a brother and a sister or something isn't it they were the yeah. rumors or block that you could swap between yeah 
The thing well, is, they've well, just been milking all... the online on Grand Theft Auto Five, and they don't want to lose that or that, that all that money they're making off shark cards. Do do, do they? So, oh, that uh, will be in there. <sighs> yeah, I think that's, that's what stuff. they'll be. Yeah, that's what they're going to concentrate on. Six, isn't it? It will be the multiplayer. I mean, I mean, look at Red Dead too. I mean, they did the multiplayer on that, but they didn't really push it much, did they? Because GTA is their cash cow, yeah. isn't it? You know, they could have done extra missions on Red Dead after the game had finished, but they didn't. As in, they did. Just... I think they did do. They did do a few sort of DLCs, but they were more like updates, content updates. Did I they don't think online. GTA no, Five online did. Mode. I don't think GTA Five did any story add-ons either. Because you remember, like in the old ones, we had like. The Lost and the Damned and the Ballad of Gay Tony. Yeah. And yeah, I think they were awesome, yeah, they man. They classed the heists and stuff as like yeah, story that's content. that's what they did. Because like, so you shit. meet more NPCs and there's yeah. cutscenes and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, the voice actors did say it was planned, but then it just never materialised. Like I said, just making too much money off online. And yeah. I get that as a business decision. You'd be like, well, why would we spend all this money to make more story content when people are putting so much money into online. You can't really blame them, can you? Mm. And if that's what the majority of people want, then put the money into that, I suppose. You've got to think, we're not the generation that they're selling this to. It's the younger generation. Mm. Uh, yeah, the 12-year-olds. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nope. I mean, GTA 6 looks, from its trailer, to be very sort of social media orientated. Mm-hmm. Like it shows a lot of people out partying and filming themselves for videos and stuff. Just hope it doesn't go woke, because if not, Webby will just have an aneurysm. I will, mate. I'm already a little bit concerned, but I'm not going to go into that right right now. They should know their customer base, though. Yeah. At the end of the day, but I it's think GTA cow. can get away with doing whatever. I mean, we know oh, they they're could have go... anything in that, and people. Still we know they're going to go mental. Now they've finally got a woman protagonists they're going to be calling it like sexist and misogynist or you can literally kill women it's a woman killing simulator and you think oh for fuck's sake it's a video game piss off right it's nine o'clock now come on next right, game next Who, who's next <laughs> who's after peace is nick oh no nick yeah sorry yeah uh i've only played one more so we'll talk about it's um silent hill 2 remake oh yeah how you getting oh, on nice. Yes, I mean, I'm enjoying it so far, but I only played the um, Silent Hill 2 within the last couple of years, because I played it on stream, but right. I played the 360 HD port, which is renowned for being crap, which, see, they were porting games back then badly, but basically that, that was really bad then because they removed all the fog from the game, and it's the whole point, it's like atmospheric, but... Also, once they removed the fog, you could actually see the end of the world, like the game world, like the black bars and stuff, where if you could walk past the, you know, the, um, what's it called? You know, like the barrel. Or whatever. Yeah, the zone. The you could, you'd fall off the edge of the game. So, and they never ported it on Xbox, because that was when Xbox were charging for updates and PlayStation 3 were um, letting them update it for free. Right. Uh, yeah, one uh, of them got patched, one of them didn't. Yeah, the free, I can't remember which uh, one it was. Yeah, PS3 got patched, because PS3 patches were free early on, because, yeah, PlayStation 3 started off poorly, so they were really good to the devs, that's why they had a lot of the stuff like that. But, but yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying this so far, and um, I'm trying to think what's in there. Yeah, the only thing that's annoying me so far is the game is just really dark, like, too dark. You need to use your flashlight, mate. Yeah, no, I, I that's, know, that's even it. When, when you use your on, flashlight, it is yeah, dark, I, but, like, I that know. is the cool thing about it, I think. It does definitely add to the atmosphere. Yeah, like, I know. Because dark just areas saying, are really dark. Yeah, but it makes me jump because I've got my torch on. I can't see shit. <laughs> and then a pair, of legs, a pair of legs jump out of something and scare the shit out of me. <laughs> so that's why I don't like the it. The game's working as intended then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I get it. But it's just... I, I, I like fuck those speak. leggy mannequin things anyway, mate. Yeah. They're, the, they're the worst. Well, Pyramid Head did fuck those leggy things in the kitchen, but... Which they sort Not of in altered. this version. No, yeah, they altered it a bit. But then... For how the graphics were back then, I was never really sure whether he was having sex with the legs or just ripping them apart. 
if you see what I mean, and breaking yeah, all yeah. the things together, it was a bit... Interpretation and all yeah, that. Yeah, it was a bit, he was just playing with a pair of legs on a kitchen counter. We've all done that, haven't we? But, um... No, but I'm yeah, I'm liking it, mate. It is um, a very atmospheric game. It's probably one of the best remakes I've played as well, you know? Of yeah, because game. it stays true to the original games. Yeah. It's just like like the some of the Resident Evil remakes stay true to the original, and they've done really well. And so you get the nostalgia, the better graphics, the people who never played it back then, the people who want to play it again. And it's just older games were just honest. I mean, I haven't been tried to be sold any DLC and microtransactions and stuff like that. And also there's a few bits which I really like, which is um, if you get attacked, you actually see the colour of the dual sense controller changes colour. So like how health like if you ask what it's like green yeah, like Resident like, Evil yeah but with um it reminds me of um you had the VMU on the Dreamcast where it told you on there well, obviously it wasn't it lit up like that so that's pretty fun and the problem is I keep accidentally using a health potion when I don't need one I keep pressing triangle oh yeah I've done that many times because Troy's like I'll try, switch my weapon with triangle oh no yeah and I keep pressing I, I mean, I'll probably eventually get used to the controls. Plus, run is like L1, which is a weird button to have. I think you can change the um, controls in the game, which I saw a YouTube. Yeah, you can change good. it to clicking in the stick, but yeah, I just but, stuck with L1. Well, if that's what the developers want you to have as the buttons, I kind of like to leave it. I don't... You know, I haven't... Back in the day, I used to be able to completely mod any game with any button, didn't you? Like, back when you used to get... Pretty much, game. yeah. Yeah, but whereas now, you haven't really done that for a long time, so thinking to do that now just seems a bit weird, but... And also, the combat, like I said, I think it's by design, just a little bit clunky. So the like original trying... one was, yeah, was Yeah, I think anyway. it was more clunky, the original. So like I'm oh, hitting definitely. Them with, I'm hitting them with, the like, bit of wood with the nails, and I'm trying to learn like their patterns so like okay i'll dodge now but or i'll just dodge but instead of dodge backwards i dodge forward into them which doesn't really help and one thing which they've done which i want to turn off because it's creepy as fuck but then i don't want to turn it off because i think it's brilliant is the radio which you pick up in the game which in the original you just hear static come through your tv speakers and you, which you'd know that means enemies are coming. Yeah. Well, whereas this one, the radio actually comes through your controller speaker. And the first yeah. time that went off, not just the static, but you also hear, like, uh, uh, like the enemies and stuff like that. So I was playing the game, and my girlfriend was, was like, <laughs> and we heard that, and she went, what the fuck is that? I was like, I don't know. I didn't realise it was coming from the controller initially because <laughs> normally I turn all that off. But I think whether it's an update or a, each individual game. So I think I had a game before which had that, but I turned it off because I'd rather have it through. So I think I was playing on headphones, so I wanted it to just be through the headphones. So I don't know if you can turn that off, like in the yeah, because there's, 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 there's a trophy for completing it without that radio switched on. Ah, right, or do you just not pick the radio up completely? No, or pick, pick it up, it whichever, up and then you but can yeah. Just switch it on in your inventory. Yeah. But there's a few little bits, and the puzzles, I mean, it's quite cool that you can have, like with me, I've got the puzzles and the exploration on normal, but the combat on easy, so you don't just have that, you can, you know, make certain bits of the game easier or harder to suit your gameplay. Yeah. Which I think is quite nice, you know, accessibility and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I've been trying to... I thought, oh, I'll try and complete it last weekend. And I think I've played it for four hours in total. That's the most I can do in two weeks. But no, it does, mate. I mean, yeah, that's a good game. I was it... actually gutted, uh, I will quickly say. They, they did bring the pro patch out for the game. Yeah. And the pro version was worse. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, I just want <laughs> Digital Foundry... So yesterday I'm they've patched the patch for a... Oh, they've is patched they... the patch. Yeah, they've patched the patch. Yeah. <laughs> is it, I don't is know it if they've better now? It? It, yeah, well, yeah, because it was having ghost in image, uh, yeah. uh, artifacting and stuff, wasn't yeah, it, due to the PSSR? Yeah, it's still got that where 
basically if you go up against like a wall or something, his head and outlines sort of, yeah, ghosts behind him. It's a weird thing. I mean, they could have just said, no, that's the art style, but... But that still annoys me that, I mean, the pros doing it as well, which is one of the reasons they're still doing, oh, do you want performance or quality mode? I want both. Stop giving us options. It, it depends on the developers at the end of the day how they well know they, they know the machine because pretty know, much playing like the first party Sony stuff. It I generally know, but it is just... you're playing on uh, graphics mode, but you're getting the benefits of performance with it. Yeah, but even so, I just think you know I don't like to call out devs because I've never made a game, but it's just. It just seems like a lazy cop out. All right, well, we'll just make this it's, one first. Yeah, I don't think it's and... also the, the, all completely down to the devs. It's also down to the engines they use for the games and what they're capable yeah. of. Yeah. I just think if their bonuses were on it and stuff like that, all games, if they wanted to, they could be 4K at 60. If they had, to, if that's what they were told they had to do, they would. But having this performance or quality mode be in the norm. I just think that's why it's not getting done, but... I mean, that shouldn't take you... As long as... Like I said, with frame rates and stuff, as long as it doesn't drop so bad that you notice the game star and it's not the end of the world, but... I just don't like having to choose because I sit there before I started the game and I was like, well, which one do I choose? Performance or quality? Which one's the best? Oh, better Google and look at Digital Foundry because I don't want to play the wrong setting of the game. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I don't know. I'm enjoying yeah. it. Good. And I may finish it before the end of the year. Well, good luck to you. All right, Stunty, yeah. talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I must. I I had to disappear for a little bit uh, earlier. Um, still playing Banishers: Ghosts of New Eden. Oh yes, um, that came out this year, didn't it? Isn't yeah, it yeah. Very very slow it was at the beginning. Um. And yeah, I was a little bit on the fence. wasn't sure because it's sort of just a bit. It just plodded along, really. Um, eight hours in now, um, and uh, yeah, I've just had a mission that's been really good. And then I had a boss battle at the end, which is a bit, which is a bit Dark Soulsy. Um, yeah, good. Really, really enjoying it now. Um, it, it's one of those. It probably take you a while to get into it, but yeah, it's good. It's um, recommended. Um, I don't think a lot of people have played it though. I no. looked at my friends list, and only one person, Japanese Bean, he's the only one that's played it. Wow. Um, spiders game. Sorry? Is this a game that one of uh, Spiders games, the developer? Uh, the people yeah. who made Greedfall? Yes, it is, as far as I know. Yeah. Or, yeah, or the. What was the one before that? Maybe? Bound by Blood, wasn't it? Possibly. That's like late 360, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it was them, yeah. It's got a good rating. I mean, if you look at the rating on focus this game, it's really good. Yeah. Oh, was it Focus? That's the pub- it? Focus yeah, yeah, are just yeah, the publisher. Yeah. Oh, they're the publisher, are they? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's good. I'm really enjoying it. It's um, a little bit challenging. I mean, the boss battle was pretty straightforward. Oh, and also I've got a gun now, which is a bit bit bloodborne sort of having this gun. But the only thing is the reload on it's really slow. But it it does seem to be as I'm getting more and more into the game, I'm getting more extra bits added to my skill level, so as well. Um, oh, sorry, I just want to chime in. The developers don't nod. Oh, it's not oh right. Well, no, that's fair oh, enough. Right. Weird. That's the um, oh, what do you want to call it? Life is strange. Developers. So they've done Life is Strange, Vampire. Tell me okay, why. Okay, yeah, Vampire Twin was Mirror. supposed to be good. Yeah, Descent. Yeah, don't know them ones. So yeah, I know Vampire. Yeah, that was, a, that was a very early PS4 game. So that was mm. 360. Uh, sorry, Xbox One. Um, yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's really stingy on the trophies though. I mean, eight hours in, I've only got five. Well, uh, not, not one. For and they're all bronze. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm, I'm playing. It. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't <laughs> like it anyway. It's not your kind of game. It's it's a grown-up game it the, the graphics are good <laughs> stunty um I, i've just noticed it is unreal 5 yeah it's unreal yeah uh, is it is it open worldy because it looks like it's like a third person action R, R, rpg um, to me or is it? it it isn't not really i mean it has got open world sections but when you're doing some of the missions they're quite linear right it okay. takes you down a path yeah so you can't just sort of like 
you can't just go wherever you want. Mm-hmm. It is linear on that on the missions. Yeah. Um, what I like about it as well is it's it's all English actors and a Scottish the the guy is the, is a Scottish actor. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, so it's quite cool on that. Um, and basically, they're just trying to destroy all these spectres or uh, ghosts. And they have a mission, like, say, one of the missions I went to where there's this woman in this house, she's living with an ironmonger, um, but the ironmonger's not her husband, it's someone else, and she's getting tormented by a ghost. So he comes along, tries to sort the, the problem out, I won't go into too much details, but he tries to banish the ghost. But is it, it needs to be banished, or does it need to be saved? Because... Why is it a ghost? What happened to be to make it become a ghost? Was it why was it killed? So you find out it's like a little bit of a little bit of like a murder soul suspect oh, sort of style. Cool. Yeah, yeah it has um, a little bit. Yeah, good old murder yeah. soul suspect. Oh, yeah, it has a little bit of that. that game. I actually quite like that game. It mm. was late in a generation, wasn't it, and kind of got overlooked a bit. But so you'll have a little bit where you'll have a thing where it will start to reenact what happened before. And then you have to decide should that person is, should the ghost be destroyed or sacrificed, you know, sacrificed, or is it not the ghost that fought? And is it the person that's actually, that's been tormented by this ghost? Is it because of something they did? Mm. So it's a little bit different and that's why I quite enjoy it. Yeah. It's very story. It's, I mean, it's a bit, a little bit witchery, you know, I'd say. I would say the witches, the, the difference is the witch is open world, isn't it? You can just yeah. go wherever you want, where this is a lot more linear. But then I don't think this is as big a studio as, uh, you know, um, yeah, it looks good, CD man. Project. Yeah, it does look yeah, good. Yeah, I like it. I really do. Yeah, I'm going to stick with it. At the moment, it's the first time in a while I've actually got a couple of games I'm really into. Oh, probably Stalker yeah. and this. Uh, right, that's Always it. good. Hmm. Um, uh, I'll just uh, briefly talk about Final Fantasy XIV then, because the, the the latest patch came out last week. Okay. Uh, so I've picked it up and started playing it again. I think I spoke before about the fact that I kind of went off it for a bit due to the fact that my inventory was full up. So I didn't have room for any new gear per se, without having to just chuck stuff away which I didn't want to do, uh, and in this update they added an extra thing to the wardrobe where you can save out uh, groups of clothing as outfits, and it takes one slot instead of five, freed up a load of inventory, so I went straight back in and I've started playing it again. I've run the new dungeons, or the, I'll say the two old endgame dungeons and the newest one. Uh, the newest one is my favourite of the three, by far. I actually quite like that, and the arena in the final fight permanently changes partway through as well, which adds a little extra dynamic to the battle. The new 24-man raid is Final Fantasy XI inspired this time. Okay. That they've added, so there's obviously going to be a hell of a lot of lore there for people who played that. Oh, yeah, because XI was the other MMO. Uh, yeah. And again, it's 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 decent. It's quite well done. The, like the, all of the raids have looked nice, in my opinion, and the way they go through, nice. uh, or you progress through them. Cool. It, just thoroughly enjoying being back in and sort of playing it again, and doing my weeklies and dailies, getting my tomes to get my new gear. Stuff slowly getting stronger. Battle, They're going to be adding new Hilda brand and stuff then. later on. <laughs> yeah, basically like sticking back on the old clothes and being like, yeah, nice one. I, I don't get that because this expansion has actually had quite a bit of pushback. All oh, right, okay. There are a, a lot of people who don't like this expansion at all or the story. Mm. And I didn't have any issues with it. I, I didn't get it. Like I said before, you're going from what I believe to be the end of possibly one of the greatest stories I've ever experienced in a video game. The 2.0 to the end of um, Endwalker. Yeah. Like, there's not many faults with that at all, and it thoroughly entertained me for a decade. Yeah. Um, it's going to be hard to sort of beat. Yeah. And 
where do you go from like that crazy style end where it gets to to then have like something else? And this whole thing was advertised as the casual vacation off. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to end up having like this big world ending thing every expansion. No. I'll just kind be, of thing. I'll and just that big world sane. ending thing was something that was built up for years and years and years. Yeah. Like slowly got there and you found that new information through each expansion and patch as you got closer. But yeah, I, I'd still enjoy the story. There's a lot of people that don't care about anything that's kind of going on in the story. And it's just like, no, it's a different... It is a side expansion. You get them every now and again. Like you say, you can't always have that kick-ass story of saving everything. Yeah. But then you don't know where the patches are going to go because even in the last ex- um, Endwalker, towards the end of that expansion, it started dealing with another one of the reflections and a storyline tied to that, which was all to do with the the lost sister dragon of one of the other characters in the game and also a character that's tied into the main storyline in a way that they were actually there taking part in it in some aspect. Yeah. Also, awesome, mate. Cheers. Cheers, Darren. Mm. Uh, Peeps, anything else from you, mate? Uh, only like the first descent. I've been playing a little bit of that. I'm not surprised. I don't really to know too much about that. First descendant. I mentioned yeah, only because it was on that it was pro enhanced and it looks pretty good. Yeah, and plays I thought, really well. It's a I'm... fluid playing game. Yeah, I haven't tried any like pro like type games, so I thought, well, I'll, it's obviously a free download. Um, put it on. Yeah, I've been quite impressed. It's, it very much reminds me of Destiny, although I've never really played too much Destiny. But it's it seems to start very similar, and then you do like a big hub type area, then you go off and do different missions. I'm still haven't done too much. I'm still getting to grips with it. Don't really know what I'm doing. It looks like there's quite quite a lot to it. It seems very. It looks very complicated. Uh, I'm slowly, slow, it's a grindy game. Slowly that's, getting that's there. The, yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. It's a it's a grindy game. You're gonna constantly find yourself like redoing content, but it's worth doing because it yeah. levels you up. It levels your weapons, which in turn start leveling your player level, which will increase your things like how much you can carry and. Etc. Every time that goes up as well to a point. I mean, yeah, it's the mechanics the and the gun, right the shooting, and everything's you know really tight, and there's, like you say, there's plenty of guns and weapons to pick up and stuff. And yeah, I'm liking it. Um, there's plenty of people playing it online as well, so yeah, you know, never struggle getting anyone to do you know get in with the games with you, but. Did you never really try it, Webby? Oh, I've rinsed it, man. I've played it shitloads. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you completed it, didn't oh, you? Oh, did you? We went through it. Yeah, yeah, me, you and Pudster, I think, yeah. went through it, didn't we? Old Puddy Waddy, yeah, he loves a bit of First Descendant. It's quite no, a but you, you're on Xbox, aren't you? Yeah, it's got full cross-play. Oh, was it cross-play? Yeah, yeah, cross-play yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I played mostly on PC. Oh. Just jumped into Discord chat. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah, so if you fancy some co-op... Then yeah, I might have to try and get some... Me and Darren are always up for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, so you can sort of show me the ropes type thing and try and... Um, I think I'm a level... Well, there's two different level types, and now I'm like a level, normal level 8, then there's like a... Is it a mist- mastery or mystery level or something? Yeah, your mastery rank, Which is a yeah. different level. Yeah, yeah every mastery time you rank. upgrade that, it's worth doing every time because you get a hell of a lot of... Well, you get good stuff. It's a lot of slow power creep as well. You'll eventually start getting better weapons. You can level the guns up with older guns and other bits and bobs, but you're mainly going to be later on farming for blueprints for weapons and characters so you can craft right. them. And I will say, most of the it. characters, if not all of them, I've actually kind of enjoyed playing. There hasn't really been too many that I'm like, I hate using this character. Right, yeah, yeah like I say, I'm, it, it, graphically it looks really nice. Um, I didn't, five, yeah, obviously I didn't play it before the pro, so I don't couldn't really compare. But it still looks yeah. good. Oh, I'm it looks good it. on most yeah. things. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely try and get some... The thing is, there's so much to play at the minute. Obviously, most of us are all on COD at the minute still, aren't we? So trying to get people to come across onto this for a, a night might be a struggle. Well, I'm always around at the minute, mate. Good shout. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Nick, anything else? No, it's just that, mate. Stunny, anything else? Yeah, I've got one game. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to... Uh, a game I played, and I actually did finish it. I don't know why I finished it, but I just did. I think because of the trophies, because uh, it gave me 46 trophies. Um... Oh, what's this? <laughs> oh, God, you're giving, you, you're giving the game away, Stunny. <laughs> oh, for fuck's uh... sake. But, but this goes down as one of the worst <laughs> PS5 games, uh, well, PS4, PS5 games I've ever played. It is so it's shit. It's like Tiger. Uh, it is so shit. The graphics are so shit. The game is so shit. But there was just something about it that I just had to play it. Walking Dead Destinies. No. Oh. This is, is this the, is this this the is, old like the old Walking Dead game that no. you like peeped, is it? No, this is a new one. It's not like a crappy shooty one. It's yeah, it's a shoot a shooty game and it's a stealth one. It basically follows the story of the original T V series. Right, but the difference is not the one is, you play as Daryl. No, it's the one you play as Rick. But the only problem is with the game is when they made the game, they didn't realise that you actually have to make your character look like Rick. Oh, isn't this <laughs> the game with all the horrible, weird visual facial animations? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's really shit. It's really, really bad. <laughs> it's like an N64 Everything... game. What the fuck yeah, is it this? Does. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. Oh my it god. It's so. The game is so clunky as well. Oh, it's such hard work to play. It really was, but I had to do it because the trophies were just so good on it. You know, <laughs> this is just for you, peeps. You know, <laughs> yeah, it perked my interest. <laughs> God, although, although just... I'm watching the Twitch stream and it does look bad. It is really <laughs> bad, but it followed the story. The only difference is you do have guidelines where um, you can have. People in, say like you could have, um, oh, I can't remember who it is now. Uh, say Glenn, Glenn and someone else, and you have to pick who's going to survive and who dies. Well, you know, and then it, it doesn't, but it doesn't really change the storyline. It just means that character's dead. All uh, right. Weird. All uh, right. But yeah, it's, um, but I did finish it. It took me seven hours to finish it. I mean, I could go for the platinum on it, but I'm not that sad. So I'll let you do that. Piece. Oh my god! I'll do that, it does mate. look like a PS2 game, doesn't it? It, it does look like so a PS2. So bad. It was really bad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was even it's just like it. Lord of Rings Gollum bad or King Kong bad. Yeah, I found a copy of that actually for a quid, so I'll give that a go next year. I always play <laughs> one. Which one? What? The Gollum. Lord run. of Rings Gollum. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, I always, oh, I always like to play one crap game a year. And I've done it now, so, you know. <laughs> I'd, I'd giggle because there's so many good rage video compilations on YouTube of people really <laughs> getting annoyed with Lord of the Ring uh, Gollum. Mm. Mm. Oh, uh, have you played anything else, uh, Switch? Oh, I've just played the usual lot. There's not really much yeah. to talk about. It's the same sort of stuff. Cool. Peebs, anything else? Uh, oh, well, I will oh, briefly sorry, yeah. say they did add uh, a new game mode to... Um, Fortnite Save the World for oh, the first time in that? like years. My goodness. Uh, it's basically like a Hunt the Titan mode. You have to go into a map, trigger off like a search thing, and then find the footprints, which spawns the monster that's covered in crystals. It's like a giant sort of smasher. Shoot the crystals off him, and he jumps off into another part of the map, and you just have to follow him around until you finally finish him off. But, yeah, there's, there was that. Peeps, anything else, mate? No, I don't think so, mate. All right. Um, there's been a couple of questions on the Twitch stream, so I'm just going to read them out. Uh, Wes asks, do you think this year's game lineup has been weaker than last year's? No, this year's been good this year. It's, no. We've had some good, good this years. Year last year. Both years have been good, I think. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember last year being all that. 
I mean, remember much of last year's games. This year's been fucking great for RPGs, man, if you're into RPGs with Yakuza, Final Fantasy, Unicorn Overlord, Metaphor Refantasio, to name a few. What was our games of the year? I can't remember what our games of the year were last year. I need to go back and look. But no, I think the, I think this year's been fucking awesome, to be honest. Lies of P was my game of the year last year. They still There's haven't a lot of... showed off the um, DLC for that yet, either, or whether it's DLC or a full, full-blown sequel. Oh, right. There's a lot of games from this year that I still haven't played. I mean, there's Stellar Blade, there's Rise of Ronin. I mean, I just, they're, they're just holding their price, so I haven't picked mm. them up Rise yet. of Ronin's got a pro patch as well. The, the, mm. I, I don't think it improves it a great deal, but it is better. I mean, you think Call of Duty has been good this year? I mean, that Banishers I'm playing. Um, Stalker 2, what else yeah. have we had? Uh, Hell Divers. Hell Divers. So, so <laughs> Astro Bot. <laughs> yeah. It's been a few this year. Yeah, it's been a few. What's that one where you've been playing with them? You play as the monkey in the China, oh, whatever Black it's Myth, called. Wu, Wu Kong, yeah. That's yeah, Black Wiff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm interested in that. Yeah, uh, Black it's Black Wiff, isn't it? Yeah, Black, <laughs> <laughs> Black Wiff. Black Wiff Wu Wong. <laughs> yeah, the physical yeah, copy comes out on the 12th of December. Yeah. Nice. I've got my pre order in. Dead but Rising. They never let us know the date until recently. Mm. Dead Rising. You played that, didn't you? That got a re- oh, I know it's a remaster, but that came out this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. What else? Is Shadows there? of the Damned re remastered. Oh, I looked yeah. at some videos of that. That looks really shite. The graphics. It's good. Not, it's fucking good. I know man. it's a great game, but it doesn't look like it had a remaster. It looks like it's a. Port. No, the graphics. Yeah, the graphics yeah. don't look much different. No. I'll admit that. Hmm. Yeah. I see. Um, they, they. Uh, I, f- I forgot all about it. To be honest, I bought it probably beginning of the year. That they re- reissued um, Beyond Good and Evil. Did they? Yeah, on the PS4. I don't know if it's on the Xbox as well. Hmm. Isn't there rumours that Beyond Good and Evil Two is still a thing? No, oh, I wish it was. That trailer was awesome, wasn't it? For that, I remember. I did lot about two of them, didn't they? Mm, in the end, and then good, nothing. Mm. Um, the other what was the other question? Um, Clarky says, "Can I get a PS4 and play Wipeout on it without the need to be on Nine and a PSN account?" Yes. And he also yeah, says, "Stunty, do you have a spare PS4?" <laughs> you probably have actually. I yeah, probably yeah. have. I, I do have. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm selling them. Then. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but um, that's. I've got uh, a spare white one and a black one. <laughs> just gotta to say to him though, Webb, if you sell about that, that was one of the games that got a PS4 Pro patch, so like 4K 60 frames. Yeah. So. Yeah, but you don't want to. You don't want to buy a Pro because it'll sound like the fucking wipeouts coming out the console. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I think well, I'd have seen that things. standard PS5s have been in the sale for 300 and something mm. quid. Yeah, just over three, up 320. Yeah. Of so my, now PS4's... might be the time sort of, uh, to, to get a PS5. PS4s are about, uh, I don't know, I think they're about 50 to 100. Yeah, you can get a PS5 with two controllers for 350 quid. Not bad. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking at the wipeout now because I got it on PS4 on the hand. Yeah, PS4 Pro Enhanced. So if he wants it to play it well, it needs a version, online. wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but I think a lot of people didn't like it because they changed a lot of the music from the 90s because obviously they. Licensing yeah. issue. Yeah. Well, I did that in the GTA game. There's no like Michael Jackson in it and stuff like that. It probably um, the only thing I just thought is you probably just have to set up an account on the PlayStation just to even use the PlayStation. To be honest, Maybe. even though if you don't want to go online, you just I think you have to anyway. Don't you? Can you, it's a bit like Xbox. Can you can you use an Xbox without an account at all? Yeah, without an online account. Yeah, yeah. You make like a local profile. 
Oh, right. Yeah. So, I don't know. Can you do that on the PlayStation? I think, I think so, okay. yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that's his way of telling us he's been banned from PlayStation for being a naughty boy. Hmm. Yeah, because didn't Clarky get a new Wipeout book or something like he was jizzing over in the Discord? Yeah, he did, yeah. I can't right. remember which uh, chat room in the... Was it the you want to play Wipeout in VR? Wow, that's awesome, that is. I mean, those VR, PS VRs, the original ones, they're only about £30 now. They're well wow. cheap if you go in the CX. Yeah, original PS... I mean, all right, you might have to deal with someone else's... Probably wouldn't wrap rest on some skank. Yeah, you might have, to have, might have to deal with a bit of cheese, but, you know... <laughs> Rotten leather and that one. Oh. The rubber. Oh. No, so most of the rubber... Anything that's rubber today, I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but rubber, like headphones, stuff, they all perish, don't they? All the rubber on them perishes these days. It's never mm. used to in the olden days. As much. No, because everything was made better. Mm. Um, a couple of bits of news. Only two bits of news for this week. I just wanted to quickly <coughs> mention. Uh, you seen the uh, Game Awards? The games mm. that have been nominated... Uh, at the Game Awards show uh, are Astro Bot, Balatro, Black Myth Wukong, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earl, Earl Tree DLC, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Metaphor Re Fantasio. I am surprised that Silent Hill's not on that list. Yeah, and also, why is Elden Ming in on it? El- Elden Ming? <laughs> <laughs> Ming the Merciless. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah there's, there's been a lot of con- controversy about this because it's the first time DLC has been added to a Game of the Year list. Yeah, but you can't play that unless you actually do so much of the game to start the DLC. Now, that's where it fails. If you could just say, right, I'm going to load the game up, never played it before, go straight into the DLC. You can't do that with that game. You have to play the game and get to a certain section before you could even start the DLC. So... Mm. Yeah, but Game Awards go. is like infiltrated. They didn't even have Hogwarts in Game of the Year last year, did they? So, well, I'm surprised because I, because I, because I've nicknamed it the Woke Awards, um, and I'm surprised <laughs> that Dragon Age isn't in there because it ticks all the boxes. Um, so they've done something right this year, anyway. <sighs> I, I do think uh, when it comes to the whole DLC conversation, it depends how big the DLC is and how long it takes to do. Because there are DLCs out there that are, I would class like some of the Morrowind DLC as like fantastic expansions that give you like hours upon hours of content, new mm. areas, new story. Destiny always. I mean, look at around, Cyberpunk then. Phantom Liberty last year. No, oh, that was massive. That I yeah. thought that was a really good expansion. Yeah. Can you start um, that without playing the main game? You can kind of head there, I believe, at some point. Yeah, I, no, I think it unlocks on. after a certain mission, after you've gotten certain parts of the story. If you're doing the missions in Cyberpunk story-wise, you can hammer them out quite quickly, yeah. can't you? Because mm. it's only supposed to take place over a period of like a week or something, isn't it? Right, yeah. okay. Did you play the DLC for that, Webby? What, for Black... Uh, for Elden Ring? <laughs> No, for Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. Fucking loved it, mate. It was great. Yeah, yeah I'm looking it. to pick that back up again and play it all through the whole game again on yeah. PlayStation. Yeah, you should do yeah, it, I... mate. It's a good way of doing it, actually. Yeah, yeah, I got it's it through the Curry's. On, uh, PSN. Yeah, I but got I it think 20... you have to buy Phantom Liberty separately. I don't think it's... Oh, no, it might actually... No, there was a bundle of both of them. Like the I think the shops. Cyberpunk, you don't get the free update to PS5 from PS4. I think that's a, you have to buy the PS5 disc to play it as well. So yeah, um, you don't get a PS4 version, I think you get a free update. Yeah, I bought it from... I mean, I've already played it on the PS4 and completed it. Um, but I wanted to play the DLC. And Curry's were doing it, the PS5 version, for 28 quid but with four months free Apple TV. Um, That's not too bad, is so, it? Yeah, so that works. I mean, and Apple TV's, what, eight quid a month? So realistically, it's cost me nothing because I wanted to resubscribe to Apple because there's loads of stuff on there, like slow horses to watch and other stuff. So, yeah. And I've got the code. It's come through. So I know it's all legit who curries, nice. but I don't know how long that offer's on for. So. Curries are always doing... 
like free Apple TV on a lot of stuff you buy, like controllers as well. Well, that's cool. Remember that. I um, also will say I'm still surprised that the Game Awards just didn't add a category called like Best DLC mm. or DLC of the Year. It'd be easier to do that. And that's probably actually be yeah. quite well, quite a cool section, actually. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Because there'd be a lot of DLC for games that people sort of haven't gone back to, and they're like, "Oh, that's got a good DLC, has it? Nice, I'll jump back on that." Yeah. Cool. Um, and the other thing oh, I thought was quite funny. Um, you might have heard me talking about the Delta Force beta a little while ago on the podcast. Oh yeah. Obviously, it's a Chinese game, um, and you know what China are like at stealing shit. Well. Delta Force has been caught using Battlefield 2042 art for marketing the game. What a uh. load of shite. And well, and because a big part of the actual game itself is a Battlefield clone. You've had me talk about a lot about that mode. It is pretty much Battlefield, but actually runs a lot better. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to put that bit a bit bit in the news because that's uh, that's a bit naughty, isn't it? You know, but they've nicked the battlefield art and put it into into advertising uh, the 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 Delta Force game. So yeah, but that's too typical China. They nick everything. So and get away with it. Yep. Yeah. That's all my news. Uh, anything else you guys want to add for this week? Oh, when is the Game Awards anyway? Just like in a couple of weeks, uh, like early December, isn't it? I don't. Let me have a look. Game Awards 2024 date. A couple of weeks away. Thirteenth of December. All oh, right, fair few then. Yes. That being shown on the TV. Now nah, be on YouTube, wouldn't it? Twelve thirty AM on Friday the thirteenth of December. So was a Ooh, time, Friday the thirteenth. Twelve thirty AM. I think most times I just go to bed and watch it when I get up first yeah. thing in the morning. Yeah. So there we go. So if there's nothing else, that's, that's all our news for the week. That's all the questions for the week. That's bloody hell. Loads of podcast hosts this week insanity yeah well I, I won't be here next week because I've got to get up really early on Monday next week you won't what about Sunday well I could do I could go on Monday if you're doing a recording on Monday evening but just not Sunday yeah so you can do Monday but not Sunday actually no maybe not because I'll be getting home straight off and yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. It'll be about. Okay, well, we'll uh, discuss because yeah, I've got. Yeah. Because then this will be your last podcast until next year, Darren. If that's the case. Sad times. Sad. Yeah. I could come on, but I don't do Patreon episodes. Well, I did see at the beginning of the episode it's, free, <laughs> it's a freebie next week. Oh, well. you did! You did! Yeah. You did! You did! Old yeah. Okay. Well, we'll sort that out in, in during the week. Who's who's coming yeah. on next week? That's fine. Um, but no, thank you for coming on, everybody. It's been really, really good this week. I will actually be, talk about the games I've played next week because um, I've completed a couple of big RPGs, uh, but I didn't want to talk about them this week and send everyone to sleep. So we'll save that for next oh, week. Thank you. Um, oh, that. Um... Fantasian's out soon, isn't it? Talking about um, JRPGs. Fantasian. Like Neo Dimensions, is it called? Oh, it's basically a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. mobile phone game that I was kind of always like, oh, it's trapped on a mobile, it's going to yeah. die. 45 it's quid. Yeah. Peggy 12. yeah, and then they've, they've actually ported it and made some improvements to it, and it's coming out. It's uh, Uemetsu. <laughs> Composed, isn't it, and stuff? And Fifth of a December. Lot of load of yeah. Final Fantasy involved. Yeah, I'll be picking that up. Nice. Yeah, and Path of Exile 2's out uh, in a couple of weeks as well. So. 
Yeah, because it wasn't it originally supposed to already be out, and then it was pushed back a bit. Well, the weird thing about Path of Exile 2 is, I was chatting in Discord about it today, is it's going to be free to play, but it's only going to be yes. available on the 6th of December for people who've paid for an early thingy Access. That's, that's, yeah, they usually end up um, doing something like that with stuff, like yeah, but, the uh, Founders Packs. Mm, but there's no date for the free pl- for the free-to-play version. So uh, when is the... Um... The uh, other thingy one going up, the paid version. 6th of December. Mm. So around the time of the Game Awards, then, I reckon that'll be when the free-to-play version goes up. It'll be a nice announcement during the Game Awards mm. to say oh, the, the free-to-play version's out tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, usually it's a week or three days, isn't it? Five days sometimes. Yeah, but the fact they've the not put a day out, but... I... I, I, I... Don't reckon it'll be out till next year for everyone else. Mm, depending on the price, it might be worth it. Because mm. yeah. for, for the value for money you always get from those kind of games anyway. Yeah. And the fact that this one does look pretty damn good. Well, it looks a lot better than And fucking... they got a lot of Diablo. successful over the last one. I like Diablo 4. I got uh, bored of it get me wrong. too quick. Yeah. I mean, I'm st- I might pick up the expansion for that because it's currently in the sale. But again, it's like I've got other games and it's just kind of like, it's just one class and an area. Yeah. Per se. But, yeah. Cool. Well, then on that, that note, people, we're going to end it here. Been over two hours. It's been awesome. Uh, from myself, Peeps, Nick, Darren and Stunty, it's been awesome. To those of you who've been who've listened live on Twitch, Clark here, I'm looking at you. Thank you very much. And uh, we will see you next week. A goodbye. Thank you.